Today's topic is going to be called white privilege in both kingdoms. So it's a question mark. Over over this camp. This, cl this class is inspired by camp today. <laughs> the, the, the Stockholm Syndrome is real, man. I, I keep saying it. Now, we had a, a, a very, a, in, in the beginning, a very humble, uh, friendly dialogue with a, group, with a group of brothers, a couple of brothers from a, from a different camp, um, different group, whatever. And uh, we already, Captain Chairman already saw it was going to be a problem. But it, it came off, you know, listening in first, they were, you know, listening, edified or whatever. Then the doctrine of baptism came about, how important it is to receive salvation through being baptized. But in the same breath, there's no fringes are present except on one out of the two. And then um, you had um, um, one saying he saw as a white man, one doesn't grieve, one doesn't believe, or something like that, whatever. The point is, is that the doctrine of nations being saved is something that I, I think out of all the doctrines, I despise the most. I hate it the most. Aside from Islam, I despise Islam, the passion. In Christianity, beyond that, but nation salvation is by far the most disgusting doctrine on the planet. I'm going to tell you why. When you say that nations can be saved, you're advocating white privilege in two kingdoms. Their own kingdom and in yours. That's Stockholm Syndrome. It's a, it's a, I won't look that up, please, Stockholm Syndrome. It's a, it's, it's an, a, a sickness that, and I did this before, Christianity is Stockholm Syndrome. I did something like this similar, stiff in class, but it's the same thing. It's the same doctrine. Your enemies killing you, murdering you, getting away with it over and over and over again, killing you, stealing your land, stealing your identity, and then you give him a pass. Oh, he's good. He's keeping the laws now. Come to the kingdom with us. Come, come. That's why God made it clear. If I thought like you, you'd all be destroyed. Most high's thoughts came back, man's thoughts. This man is dumb. We're going to open, we're going to start with um, Amos 9, 11. That was used. Got to deal with it. Amos 9, 11. And then I'm going to, it's kind of, I'm kind of going backwards as I jotted all this down. My brother does be all over the place. He just fix it as I go. Amos 9, verse 11. This is the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 11. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. Right, the tabernacle of David is referring to the time in which King David was ruling, and all 12 tribes are under his dominion. All 12, he had all 12 under him, no splits, no separations, all together under David. Go ahead. To read again, the top. And that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David. In that, that day, and that's very important to understand those three words. Small, three words, big meaning, mean the, in, towards the last, in the last days, toward leading up to the kingdom in that day. Go ahead. Will I raise up the tabernacle of David. The tabernacle of David represents all 12 tribes being all in, under one, united as one. Go ahead. That is fallen that fell we fell in captivity go ahead and close up the breaches thereof the breaches is a division between both kingdoms both southern and northern kingdom because it is split under Solomon's son the moron Rehoboam all right he was young and foolish and the most I used him as a vessel to cause the split to take place during his reign go ahead and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. We raise up our ruins means our ruined state, our condition, our decayed state, Negro state, and raise it up as in the days of old, meaning raise it up as one nation once again. No longer two, but one. All right, go ahead. Verse 12, that they may Stop. put... Stop. Once he is done, verse 11, verse 12 takes place. Read again. That they may possess... The remnant of Edom. So, why does it say remnant? Because a lot of them are going to die. That's why it says the remnant. Because if the world war takes place and so forth, the war goes on, there's going to be remnants of nations that survive. Because the, the nuclear warheads of today are, are, dev are, are devastating in power. Devastating. So it says the remnant of Edom. Go ahead. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. Then it says we may possess. So once he gathers together, 
and put us and puts us under we're going it says David is going into Christ because Christ came by the lineage of David. So it's going into Christ being our king. And once that takes place and we gather together and ruins are fixed, the breaches are not breaches are cleared up, that we may afterwards possess, possess, possess. Go ahead. The remnant of Edom. Go ahead. And of all the heathen. And all of the heathen. Of all the heathen. We'll possess them. Go ahead. Which are called by my name. For example, I'll give you an example of them being called by his name. You have Ethiopians who call themselves Jews. Mm -hmm. You have Israelis, Khazar, Greek, Roman, Edomite babies. They call themselves Jews. And then you have different nations who call themselves Christians, which are still Jews. East Indians do it. Arabs do it. So it's the same thing in his name, and they put themselves in our position. Call themselves by his name. Go ahead. Which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. So we're going to possess, and it mentions Edom first, because Edom was the one who tried to maintain those breaches being disturbed, those breaches, and keep that ruin, and have that ruin continue. That's why I mentioned him first. It says Edom, and it goes, and all the nations. Why do why I say that? Because the most sides make me clear that Edom will be the one that's the ringleader behind our devastation in trying to maintain it, as he is doing now. Can I prove that? Yeah. Uh, let me prove what the, what the deacon is saying with absolute scripture. Psalms 83. I'm just reading this yeah. one line. Yeah, Psalms 83 and verse 5, I think it is. I'm not looking at it. Yes, sir. That's, yeah. Start from 3. I wasn't going to go through the oh, whole scripture. Okay. I just wanted to, because I don't want to do, yeah, yeah, get yeah. off your point. Right. Psalms chapter 83. And the verse, verse says, where the tabernacles, yes, where's that yeah. one there? What verse is that? That's verse 5, sir. Okay, five. so I was on it. Good. Read. For they have consulted together with one consent. For all of these nations, so, for they have consulted. Verse 2 tells you who it's talking about. It says, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So all of the enemies of Israel came together for the purpose of destroying the nation of Israel. And verse 5 lets you know who started it off. Mm -hmm. Read. With one consent. They all came together with one consent. Go ahead. They are confederate against thee. That confederation is all of them linked up together with the same program to destroy Israel. Go ahead. The tabernacles of Edom. You see that? He's the ringleader of the whole thing. So he's on God's hit list, number one. Yep. That's the point. That's the reason why I wanted it read, because that goes along with, all, with the scripture that you're reading right now. Goes right with it. So God, has, God there's no mistakes in here. So this love for Esau is going to die. All right, right that's You also it. have um, what I call heathen musical chairs, where Jake will take the white man and make him Japheth, as if that changes anything. It doesn't change anything. Let's just say we're wrong. Let's say Edom is not the white man. Right. We've been wrong all this time. It's the Arabs. I heard a new doctrine. East Saudi Arabians. There's a new one. East Saudi Arabians. <laughs> Did y'all get Woo! that? Rick Flair moments. That's the, exactly. Rick Flair moments. So he took the word Esau and said East Saudi. East Saudi Arabians. That's well, a trying, sick nigga. Trying to figure out which group of Arabs in those Saudi Arabia is it? Which one is it? I'll deal with that in a warning shots video coming up soon about Edom. I promised months ago. Y'all know we waiting on that one, right? <laughs> now I'll get First Chronicles 28 and 5. I'm going to clear up that old Esau, who Esau has stuff real quick. First Chronicles 28 and verse 5. So what's, being, what's happening is when you push the nations can be saved, you're pushing an American, you're pushing democracy in the kingdom. That's what you're doing. You're pushing, you're pushing the melting pot into the kingdom. That's all it really is, is to maintain white supremacy within the kingdom. That's all you're really doing. You can try to lie about it and spin it around. And it's what it is. To keep Massa on top while you are on the bottom, that's all it's about. Chronicles 28 and 5. Let's see what the kingdom of God represents or what, it's, what, what it is. First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 5. Because oftentimes you think, people say kingdom of God, you're thinking about the heavens, the most high's domain, which is true. But the most high is a kingdom on earth as well. Read. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. The throne of what? 
the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Israel is the kingdom of God. Israel is the kingdom of God. He's, David said, I set my son Solomon over the kingdom of the Lord. So Israel, we are the, na we are the kingdom of God. That's what we are. There cannot be no kingdom of God without God's people. And that's just clear cut. Mm -hmm. Destroy that whole thing about Israel being cast away. Well, that means there's no kingdom of God then. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the congregation of the Lord. So Israel is the congregation of the Lord. That's God's church. Church's congregation. Israel is the congregation of the Lord. Go ahead. And in the audience of our God, keep and seek for all the commandments of the Lord your God, that ye may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance for your children after you forever. So our land was to be passed down from child to child to child. We're supposed to leave behind something for our children. Israel messed that up by sinning against our God and lost that inheritance. Now we inherit freaking welfare and food stamps and ghettos and pissy elevators. That's our inheritance now. And diapers in the ground and crack needles. That's our inheritance. Here, son, here's the apartment. Two, two bedrooms. Here you go. Boom. Rather than an entire planet. We chose, nah, we don't want that. Deuteronomy 11 and 21. Deuteronomy 11 and 21. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, and the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. As the days of heaven upon the earth. So Moses is going to explain to us what heaven upon earth is exactly, and who it's for. Because for some odd reason, it seems to be for everyone. Continue. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. So this him. heaven is conditional. There's conditions behind whether you get this heaven or not. Go ahead. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. If you keep the commandments that he gave us, then, he says, if you do that, then will I. Read again. Then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. Right, go ahead. And ye shall possess greater nations. The Amos 9. You shall possess greater nations. Greater, I mean mighty nations, fierce nations. You shall possess them. Go ahead. And mightier than yourselves. Nations, some nations are very fierce, very mighty nations. We will possess them, own them. They will be our property. Go ahead. Every place whereon... The soles of your feet shall tread, shall be yours. So wherever Israel puts their foot, is mine. I step foot in Japan, up, oh, this is mine now. I step my foot in China, oh, I like this place. Oh, I messed up my, oh, I'm in Africa. Well, I got to fix that place. But I'll take, I like, I'll take that too. No, that. we say we got to fix it. No, no, we make them fix it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we say, you know what, I like this, this. y'all fix this, right. according to what I want. Yeah, fix that, fix that. Read again. They think that's rough. They don't like that. That's Some okay. people They'll struggle right. with They'll that. Right. They're going to be all right? Yeah, I mean, I don't all right. care. Okay. You're going to force it in them? Yeah, I don't care. I don't okay, care. I got you. 24. <laughs> every, every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. Go ahead. From the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. Islands, lands, wherever you set your foot is yours. God says, wherever you set your foot, is yours. Not a corner, not a block, not the wire. Land. Wherever you set your foot, that will be your place to be. That's your land right there. Whoever's there, it don't matter. You can take them, just take, just take the land, take them in possession. That's heaven upon the earth. Go ahead. Okay, yeah. You know, there's been some, I've heard some sick doctrines come from Negroes. Well, most of like sick statements. Ah. <gasps> The Israelites, they took the land from so-and-so. They took the land. Well, I'm talking about when we went into the land of Canaan and all that. You got some sick Negroes that, that think that way. We didn't take nothing. It was always ours. Right. They don't understand that. They, 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 you know, that's too heavy for them. But like you say, you got to force it in there. When the Most High said that the whole planet Earth belonged to Israel, like what he told Ezra. 
He said, for thou, he, he said, for thou madest the world for our sakes. That's the proof right there. So everywhere we set our, anywhere our thoughts go is ours. That's what it means to be the children of Israel. You're the children of God. You're the sons and daughters of God. That's what that means. So that means everything, including the people, belong to you. That's too heavy for us. But Stockholm Syndrome, that, that, that won't work. Stockholm Syndrome and that statement is like <laughs> diametric, uh, diametrically opposed mm -hmm. to each other. Go ahead, Deacon. Yeah, I know you're going to help break that spell, so oh, go ahead on with it. So you explained what that word means. <laughs> you said diametrical. Oh, yeah. uh, they're like polar opposites. Oh, there you go. All right. <laughs> like polar opposites. Like night and day. Yep. Like plus and minus. Like black people and white people, <laughs> so you can understand. <laughs> <laughs> Read 25, watch this. 25, there shall no man be able to stand before you. So when you see a place you like, and people are there, you go, I want this land. No one can say, you can't have it. No, I want this land. That's it. There's, there's no what I don't want. This is my land now. Kind of like what Esau did to us. Came to the side of the world. Columbus said, hmm, I like this land. I need about 50 men. I can kill. Five. They're too friendly. I kill about 5,000 of them off. Take those, sell them. The, the power that we had, he gave to our enemies. Mm -hmm. And, he, and gave, the power he gave them, he, he used against us on this side of the world. So that blessing that he gave to our, to our enemies to conquer us with, we once had against our enemies, which is the rightful way of things. The rightful way of things. The earth belongs to us. The earth don't belong to Edom. But we gave it to him when we decided to go against our God. 25 again. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon. Read that part again. For the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon. You know what dread is? Fear? I mean, that means they're terrified of you. No one would dare oppose you, come against you, say nothing to you. Like that, they had us in slavery. Don't look at my, don't look at me in the eyes, boy. Right. Yeah, yes, sir. That's how it's supposed to be with us. Now it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. That's why I says things have been turned upside down. Because before, that's how it was. Let me give an example. Yeah. Okay, good. You said slavery. That's too far back for the Negro. He can't oh, go, but okay. you gotta bring him up to date. When you're on your jobs, <laughs> okay, they already know. When you're on your jobs and y'all talking, the manager this, the boss that. Out of these little old wages. I want to make some money, man. Are you paying me right? Such and such. Boss so and so is coming through. <gasps> That's deep. That's deep. Won't break breath until he leaves the building. Let me back at it again. I worked on jobs where they said, Did he leave the building? <laughs> I'm telling you. Scared like that. Your brothers know what I'm talking about. Right. Go a step further. <laughs> okay. We be at camp. We'll go, who had, so who put us in slave ships? We'll be at camp. <laughs> White people. Right. And got a wizard. Then I got to say. Ghetto. Right. Then I. I don't care. Yeah. Then I have to say. Well, say it loud. Huh? <laughs> Deacon. Okay. Deacon. Remember when, when we went to Mr. Ragdale's museum, they yeah. had a barrel where you couldn't even laugh in front yeah. of the white man. That's the term barrel laughs comes from, a term barrel laughs, where they would say, you can't laugh out loud, we don't hear you laugh. Laugh in that barrel there. They made us laugh in a barrel. They don't want to hear black people laugh. Now they spend, now they make us millionaires making them laugh, but they don't want to hear us laugh in slavery. So you see that, that, that whole term called barrel of laughs is literal. literal. And we just thought it was just something funny to say. It literally meant what he just explained. That museum, to show it to you. Go to uh, Ezra four twenty. Ezra chapter four verse twenty. Yeah, Ezra. Ezra. Yep. Ezra chapter four and verse twenty. There have been. Mighty kings also over Jerusalem. That was David, Solomon, go ahead. Which have ruled over all countries. No, some. All countries. All, go ahead. Which have ruled over all countries beyond the river 
and told. Stop. I can't. I'm going to tell you. I left Jersey yesterday. I said, well, GWB Bridge is $15. I'm not paying $15. I'm going to go Lincoln Tunnel. It's cheaper. No, no, it's not. It's the exact same thing. I was furious. I said, I ain't got it. You mail, mail it to me. She said, oh, go ahead. I, said, I, got I have it. $15 just to go under a freaking water. To cross a bridge, $15. You had to drive over there. You had to drive. $15. They even had tolls leading up to the toll. Yeah. Yep. He paid a toll just to see another toll. $275. Okay, here you go. To $5. Give me a ticket. Oh, okay, this is $8. Why? How do you determine it's $8? Who makes these things up? Shoot them. Oh, man. <laughs> read, read again. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river. And toll, tribute. Taxes. So toll goes into you coming to a land, you got to pay a certain fee to get into the land. We had them pay us toll to get into our land. Oh, what are you doing here? Oh, 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 oh. uh-uh. So-and-so. So-and-so much money, whatever. They didn't just walk into our land like that. Go ahead. Tribute. That's taxes. Go ahead. And custom. Same thing was paid unto them. We, the nations paid us toll in taxes. We didn't pay nothing. Nothing. We had rulership. That is sovereignty. That's when Israel was sovereign. Mm. Our own rulership, our own land, our kings, officers, princes, that was sovereign. We're not sovereign now. That doctrine is retarded. For we taught. Stop pushing that. It's nonsense. This is the time when we were sovereign. Give me Second Chronicles uh, eight and eight. See what that says. I got that written there. Second Chronicles eight and eight. That says something different. Second Chronicles chapter eight verse eight. But of their children who were left after them in the land. No, I don't want that. Yet. I don't want that yet. Forget it. Mm -hmm. We'll go that later. Let me see if I want that. No, go to Matthew eleven twelve. Matthew eleven verse twelve. We'll go, we'll go back to that. So the kingdom of God was a, David and King Solomon ruled over, among other kings, prior before the split. The kingdom of God is all 12 tribes combined. That's what the kingdom of God is. But Israel, period. Matthew 11 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth Violence. He calls it the kingdom of heaven. So we're called the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Suffer what? Suffers violence. Now we know the most highest kingdom suffering violence is referring to Israel. We are the kingdom of heaven. Our kingdom suffers violence since John the Baptist during Rome. When Rome ruled over us, we were suffering violence under their reign. Go ahead. And the violent take it by force. And he prophesied that the violent, which were the Romans, were going to take our land by force during the siege of Jerusalem. 70 AD. But our nation is also referred to as the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Because, because Israel ruling is heaven upon earth. That's what it is. When we're ruling in our right minds, of course. If we don't rule the most high heaven, he throws us into heathen hell. That's what he does. That's how it works. That's the order of operations. And we're in that now. Second Chronicles 8 and verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 8 and verse 7. As for all the people that were left of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which were not of Israel. Which were not. These are heathens which were not of Israel, not Israelites. Go ahead. But of their children who were left after them in the land. Who we didn't destroy. You had their descendants that remained in the land. Go ahead. Whom the children of Israel consumed not. Whom we didn't kill who God told us to kill. Go ahead. Them... Did Solomon make to pay tribute until this day? We had them paying us taxes while they resided in our land, and we took, the, we took our land from them. And we had them paying taxes while in the land. Those who remained there had to pay taxes or toll. Same thing. Go ahead. But of the children of Israel, did, of our own people, go ahead. did Solomon make no servants? He didn't make them servants or tributaries. Go ahead. For his work. But they were men of war. And chief of his captains, and captains of his chariots, 
and horsemen. Those are Israelites. They had high status. Heathens were taxpayers. Israel were the elite. Heathens, taxpayers, common people. Israel, the elite. That's how things are supposed to be. Israel said, nah, we don't want that. We want to do what we want to do. Now we're taxpayers, and they're the elites. Go to Leviticus 25 and verse, no, let's go to Deuteronomy 14, 21, because the, the misconception is that there's equality of nations in the Bible. There is no equality of, I ask this question all the time and never get an answer. Mm. I ask, name a time, well, aside from, safe from what? That question, that, that you can find people. Safe from what? Nations can be safe from what? They can't answer that one. But the other one is, name a time in history where all nations were equal in power. Ever. Mm. Where there was equality among all nations. Where they were all in equal status and strength. And Never. Never. When you read in the Bible and you talk about salvation, a savior, and being saved, that's another word for rescue. That's what, that, that's what these, these people in the churches, they're crazy. That's just like what Deacon is bringing out. If, if your house is burning down, your savior in that case would be the fireman. He saved your behind from burning up. If you're in captivity under your enemies, Nat Turner, for instance, would, have been, would be referred to as a savior. Y'all all right? Okay, so what in the world are we looking for in salvation? You ask, like you said, Deacon, you ask many people and they come up with blank. Like they don't even know that they're in captivity. So if you don't even realize that you're in captivity and you think this is heaven, you think this is the way you're supposed to be, why would you look for a savior? That's why I can't understand the Esau. What in the world is he trying to get saved from? Well, he's the damn That's devil himself. That, let me bring another question. He told me, so here you are catching hell up under him. And you link with him, and he's talk, and the both of you talk about being saved. And I'm like, I'm trying to get away from you. And here y'all both talking about some going to heaven. That's like a, that's like a rapist. <laughs> exactly. At, so I'm trying to be saved from, from, from the victim. It made no damn sense. I want to be saved too. You just raped her. Yeah, but I need salvation also. Don't make no damn sense. Makes no sense. But the Stockholm Syndrome, the sunken place... <laughs> That's what it is. That's sunken placers, I call place. it. The sunken placers try to make it where everyone can be saved, victim and perpetrator, victim mm. and the criminal, be saved together. Unbelievable. Like he's going to be something different in the kingdom than he is now in his own kingdom. He'll be something different. He'll be the exact same devil in our kingdom as he was in his own kingdom. So let me get this straight. When, when Esau went over to the, to the lands where our brothers and sisters were, like Hispaniola, like Puerto Rico, uh, POTUS, the, uh, the different areas where our brothers were, Northern Kingdom. And it says, I'm coming to offer you the kingdom of heaven. What ended up happening? <laughs> you got robbed. Robbed. So these people coming amongst us, no, no. They represent hell and death. Just go beyond that. Even Palestine. Yeah. Ishmael had that unlock. Of course, when the Romans chase us out of the land, mm -hmm. he comes and takes that. Six-day war, he yep. takes that over. Yep. Australia. Those are British criminals mm. shipped over there. Australian Aborigines, those are the original inhabitants of the land. If you ask anyone in this room, who are the Australians, you think it's white folks. No. It's not white folks. It's the dark people that were there. That's Australians. Tasmanian. That's Japheth. The Tasmanians, right. that's Japheth. They, the they pushed, Aboriginal. they call them Aboriginals. Because they know that they're, original, they're the original inhabitants. Yep. Austronesians, it's the same people. They push them out or into the corners. So how much more will they do if, they, if we give them a, a, a piece of our land, the kingdom? They'll do the exact same thing. Try to take it over. 1421. Let's see if there's equality among Israel and the other nations. What book, Deacon? Deuteronomy 1421. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 21. Right. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Animal, decide, animal just drops dead for whatever reason. He says, you can't eat that. That's unclean to you. Go ahead. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates. You shall give it to your slave. You got to read that again. Read it again. Y'all did, did, hold it, hold it. Y'all didn't see. 
You go too fast. They didn't. I know they didn't get that. God didn't hear the right kind of reaction. <laughs> Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, verse twenty-one. This is God's commandment. Ye you shall. Got, you got to preface it with that. That ain't Christian. That ain't the Christian thing to do. You got to preface it with that. Go ahead. I'm ye, sorry, Deacon. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. So a lamb. An ox that just drops dead and falls and dies. The law says that you cannot eat it. It has to be killed. That's the point. Okay? So what did the Most High say after that? His, the animal dropped dead. God said to do what? Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that Take, is in thy gates. Because you don't know why it died. It died because it was diseased. If there were sicknesses among, that's the reason why God said you have to kill it. You have to kill it when it's in its prime so that you don't eat the sickness. Mm -hmm. But when it dies of its own, it died because of the sickness that plagued the animal. God said, give it to them. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> God said, give it to them. <laughs> that's the reason why, too fast, they didn't get it. But you want to know, you want to know what's amazing? That's how the nations do us. When you go to these chicken shops and all these wings and all this madness, they give you the, you don't know where this food is coming from. Diseased, died. The ones, that, if you look at some of these documentaries on how they deal with slaughter animals, a lot of those animals are not slaughtered properly. And, they, and trust me, I know that they do this. They have different codes on where they send the different meats to the different stores in the different areas. Okay. When I was working in retail, which had nothing to do with food, they used to do that with electronics. Send certain electronics to the better neighborhoods, send the ones that was repacked, refurbished, refurbished. they send them to the other, where the so-called Negroes and, uh, and Hispanics lived at. Right. Give an example. I used to give them hell about that thing, too. I hated that. But that's what they would do. And charge them, the, and try to charge the people the same price as if it was brand new. Yep. So you telling me they don't do that with the foods? Yes. That's why I couldn't work there too long. I say, you niggas wicked as hell. But y'all get what I'm saying, though. Y'all all right? All right. Go ahead. Read again. You shall, not eat in, you shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. That he eat it. So you give it to your slave, and you eat that. I don't eat that. That's bias. That's God. Go ahead. Or thou mayest sell it unto an alien. Or, or you sell it to a heathen. Not your own people. Sell it to an alien. Sell Wait. it to an outsider, a foreigner. That's what God says. Where's the Christianity saying? of that? Where's the love? Where's the Christianity all equal, all everybody's one? Where's that at in what we just read? All right, I'm going to shut up. Go ahead. I'll give you another example. Get Exodus 22 and 31. I'm going to show you the, the level of what the nations are compared to an animal. It's the same thing. Exodus 22 and 31. You couldn't eat animals that died of themselves or were torn up. Exodus chapter 22, verse 31. And ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is, that is torn of beasts in the field. Go ahead. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. So a beast that's torn up, uh, so a beast that's torn up a beast, or died of itself, you give it to a heathen or you give it to a dog. Mm. Same level. Not much of a difference between the two. <laughs> so that's why I'm showing you that the Most High deals with Israel and Israel alone, and he he, looks, he puts Israel on the highest pedestal. Other nations are on the bottom, Israel's on the top. Read that again. I'm sorry, Deacon. Read again. Read that statement again. And ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beast in the field. Go ahead. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. The Mosai said that we should give it to dogs. So Deacon Ithan made a point and he said that the Mosai considers the nations equal to dogs. Matthews, real quick. Yep. <laughs> Matthews 15. You know the verse I want, right? Yes, sir. Listen. Listen to what Christ, the Son of God, that was God there that said what he said there. Y'all all right? Let's see if the Son of God speaks the same way. The Savior. Matthew chapter 15, verse 25. Then came she 
and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Was that a dog that was speaking to Christ? Literally? No. It was a woman of another nation. Christ equated her with the dogs. Y'all see that? It is not right to take the bread that belongs to the nation of Israel and to give it to you dogs. Who said that? Jesus. Yep. Look at 724. One more. Let me go on. Leviticus 724. Verse 23. It's the top of, it's the top of 23 and 24. Leviticus chapter 7, verse 23. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying. Stop. So I want, so he's talking to Israel. Go to 24. 24. And the fat of the beast that dieth of itself. Get earlier. Go ahead. And the fat of the... And the fat of that which is torn with beasts Brother, earlier, go ahead. may be used in any other use. Any other use. Give it to a heathen. Give it to your slave. Give it to your dog. Go ahead, which is the same, same order. Go ahead. But ye shall in no wise eat of it. But you don't touch that. That's not for you. It's either for your slave or for your dog. You feed them both the same exact thing. Deuteronomy 28. We oftentimes read Deuteronomy 28 as the tool to teach how we're Israel. But we barely go over the, over the blessings because we're not living them. So we kind of, not straight from it, but we just don't touch on it. 28 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Yep. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations so of the earth. So he always talks about, the most I always use the word if, because you know Israel is rebellious. He goes, if you keep the commandments, you will be what? The bottom part? The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all. All nations of the earth. I will set you above all nations upon the face of the earth. Which goes back to being a person that is racist. A person that declares their race to be more superior than others or above others is a racist. God is declaring our people to be better and above anybody else's. That is racism. I know it hurts some of you in here. Some of you in here are crying inside. It's going to be all right. You're going to feel right later on. Or just go out in the world and, you know, and drain a melting pot. But it says a high above all nations of the earth. So Israel's status was supposed to be above all nations, not some, not few, all nations upon the face of the earth. Go ahead. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. We always read curses over time come upon thee and overtake thee. It says here, it says blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Overtake you means wherever you go, the blessings follow. You go to that part of land, you're going to get blessed over there. You go over there, you get blessed over there. The blessings are always going to find you. Go ahead. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If thou shalt hearken, which we didn't. Go ahead. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. We always read the opposite. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed in the field. Meaning, there is no ghettos, there is no slums, pissy elevators. Drug users, prostitution, whoredom. That's not going on in blessings. It's the exact opposite. There is none of that going on. You have your land. You have your cattle. You have your wealth. You have everything that you don't have now you have in the blessings. Go ahead. In, in or out your land. Go ahead. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. I mean, and your children. Your children will be blessed, strong, healthy. No prematures. No autism. No uh, Down syndrome, no diseases, no cancers, no kind of nothing. Blindness, nothing. Whole body, healthy. We don't have that now. Now we have children that are born all kinds of disorders, all kinds of issues, because we under them curses. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy ground. And your, your ground, your crops, blessed. Go ahead. And now we have GMOs. Now you're eating chemicals disguised as chicken or disguised as fruit and vegetables. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, 
The increase of that kind. The title goes back to what Yasef said about how the animals are killed traumatically. They're not like Israel will kill them in a way where they felt comfortable. We rape, nurse them up, and we will kill them in a way they didn't know was coming. Whereas Esau just takes a machine, yeah, cut that off. And they didn't know what's coming. You see them fighting, struggling. That's not good meat. Once it struggles, it's traumatized. Then the meat is spoiled at that point. Do y'all understand that? That's what makes it kosher. That's what we call kosher. That's the reason why, like, when they slaughter uh, cows or they uh, what they call slaughter beef. Slaughterhouses, yeah. Right. In slaughterhouses, they use, uh, they use, like, an air gun to shoot yeah. the animal right in the head because the, the animal won't even know what hit him. Because the point is you're not trying to traumatize them because those chemicals will get released into the meat. Mm-hmm. Right. How much of you all, any, any of you all had animals growing up, sheep, goat? All right. You had dogs too, right? A lot of time, what the dogs and them used to do is they used to chase the sheep or the goat and sometimes they, they get tangled up and they hang themselves, you know? But any of you all ever kill a, a, um, a sheep or a goat that was strangled by itself? No? All right, I'm going to tell you what happened because... I had sheeps back in the islands, and a couple of them, the dogs chased them, and they, you know, they wrap around the rope, wrap around them, and they hang themselves and so forth. You know, the dogs, you know, the dogs and them, they chased them, and, you know, so, so when the sheep was strangled, my family members, they're like, yo, we can't let this meat go to waste. You understand? So we read in the law here, this is something that our people don't observe. And when I was young, I didn't understand this law neither. I never knew that law. You know, but the point is, is that when you, when you kill the sheep, you understand, is blood all in the meat. You understand the blood, all the blood, the animal, when it's strangled, it retain all the blood. You understand? So, you know the scripture say you mustn't eat the blood? You know, because when you read the Levitical law, it's a certain way you have to kill the animal for the blood to drain. You understand? For the blood to drain out of the animal. So now when the, when the animal is strangled, the blood remain in the animal. Mm. You all understand what I'm saying? And don't matter how much you try to wash that meat. You understand? Because a couple of times, I, I was literally washing the meat, trying to get the blood out of it. It's real hard. That's why the Lord tell us, don't deal with that. Don't eat stronger meat. You understand? If you look at some of the chicken wings that you buy out of these, out of these Chinese Moab shops, break open, break the wings open. And you see that a lot of around the joints is real black. Yeah. That's coagulated blood. That's what that's that's what that's it. That's what that is. Yep. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I know many of y'all have done it. If you break it open, it ain't supposed to look like that. But that shows you these nations hate your guts. That's what it really means. They sit there eating rice. Meanwhile, you're eating the damn coagulated chicken. Bloody chicken. Yep. They outlive you too. They hate our guts, as we say. Right. 28 and um, 4 again. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground. Right, your children, your ground, your, your um, crops. And the fruit of thy cattle. Your beasts. The increase of thy kind. Their babies. And the flocks of thy sheep. Go ahead. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Right, the food you bring home, the, the, the storehouses. You think you preserve pres- preservations, that'll be blessed. The most I wouldn't cause it to spoil. Like, for example, you go, like, for example, you have Whole Foods. Now, if you see a Whole Foods in my neighborhood, that neighborhood is gone. It's completely white now. I, saw, I was in Harlem. I saw Raymond Flanagan's in Whole Foods on the same block. I said, oh, Harlem is gone. It's finished. Finished. You start with Starbucks. And you see fresh bike lines for bike riders. We ride bikes in the sidewalk. We don't do no damn street. They force us to do that. So you know us. You know white folks taking over. Raymond. Raymond Whole Foods, I'll give you an example. Whole Foods, you'll buy bread there. It'll be expensive. And it spoils fast. Because it's real bread. You buy bread from the hood, that bread lasts you weeks. Wonder bread. <laughs> weeks! Like, Dennis, bread is older than me. Bread be 80 years old. You wrinkly, the bread is fresh. Like you bought it yesterday. <laughs> curse be your basket and your stuff. Curse basket in store. So, Israel, the most I would have it where when Israel had real bread and real things like that, our food would last long. The most I would bless it to last long, to preserve, to be preserved for us over the winter and so forth. That's why it says, that's why it says, blessed be your basket and your store. We have storehouses. We put our animals there and meat there and so forth. Go ahead. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Right. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in. In your land. And blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Wherever else you go. Go ahead. 
The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. So that was Joshua. Joshua was putting a hurt on these nations. He ain't had no defeats. He was destroying them. Go ahead. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. They will scatter. He scattered them. Go ahead. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy store houses. Yes, go back to your, that goes back to your basket store. Go ahead. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he, sh and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Go ahead. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, mm -hmm. as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. Verse 10. And all people and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. That ain't happening now. They see us as niggas and spits, savages, zombies. Far from anything else. Far from any I'm gonna show you that too. Far from anything else. It goes, they will it says they shall be afraid of you. Now they're afraid of you in terms of whether you rob them or they clutch their purse. And the kingdom is going to clutch your neck in the kingdom. <gasps> no, I'm not going to kill you now. Just wait for it. Next verse. verse in the kingdom, they're going to clutch, they're going to clutch garden tools. <laughs> that's what they're going to clutch. They're going to clutch. That's what the scripture said. Yeah, they're going to beat their plowshares and we're all. Gonna get all of that. Okay, yeah. that's coming. All yeah, that's right. coming. All, all that's right. coming. Beautiful. It's called equal opportunity. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Jobs. Yeah. Plenty jobs. Jobs. You're on the bottom. Look at you. You're on the bottom. You're in slavery. What have you got to lose? Vine, vine dressers and plowmen. Same looking, the same speech. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make thee plent plenteous in goods, and the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, and the land which the Lord swear unto thee. I swear unto thy fathers to give thee. I mean, I'll make you wealthy. Go ahead. I mean, you'll have numerous children, unlike today. We despise even that thought. Plenty. How many kids you got? Four. Ill. That's how it is now. Back then, you had four. That's it. Four. <laughs> I got 70. <laughs> Seven. Huh? You just starting. You know, you a baby. This four baby. Oh, he's cute. He got four. Oh. Oh, man. That's how it was back then. I mean, there was no, there was no, oh, I got eight. No, it was like, I got eight. Damn. Okay. I got some more to go. I got more to do. Back then, it's a whole different mindset now. Go ahead. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season. You, you're going to get rain when you need it. Launch your crops. Go ahead. And to bless all the work of thine hand. Whatever you do, be blessed. No, dis no disappointments. Go ahead. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Stop. Read that again. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow. So who was the bank? We were the bank. I don't borrow from he heathens. That's how our mind was back then. Now it's, I owe this loan. I got to pay that back. I got to borrow against my pension. I got to borrow to pay for college. That's not how it was in the kingdom. In our kingdom. The nations borrowed from us. We were the wealthy ones. Okay, okay. Hey, Tom, can I borrow some, some cattle? Yeah, bring it back, though. Yeah, I, want, I like that sheep. Bring it back. They didn't play with these nations. They borrowed, they borrowed from us. We didn't borrow, borrow from them. We didn't need nothing from them. We had all we needed. No loans, none of that. Retirement, pensions, unnecessary. Go ahead. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Remember the curses, you shall be the tail, he shall be the head. He shall lend, he shall lend to you, shall not, you shall not lend to him. That's the flip side. Go ahead. And thou shalt be above only. Yes. Be it again. And Dang. thou shalt be above only. Thou shalt be above only. Not above with others. Aside from others, it's above only. There is no equality with nations. That's what I'm trying to show y'all. You, you shall be above all nations upon the face of the earth only. Just you, no one else. That's the blessing. Israel today, sunken places. But why? That's not fair. Yeah, because that's not fair to Negroes. That's why. You, the Negroes are found. The Negroes are Frankenstein of the white man. They're a, a, freak, a freak show. An invention. 
We you said, thou shalt be above only. Go ahead. Right. And the, that, the, the yeah, day yeah. of the Geechee is gone. Right. We're going to leave that Negro right here. <laughs> the Negro ain't going to the game. This is the last hurrah for the Negro. Yep. The Negro is going to be wiped out. The only people is like, like, like uh, the last poet say, die, nigga, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so black people can take over. Yep. Y'all remember that's too, that, that's too far back for you brothers. That's all right. Y'all better get on it. Get out of this mess that y'all listening to and get into some real, <laughs> some real music. Right. Go ahead. Read again. <laughs> and thou shalt be above only. Watch this. And thou shalt not be beneath. You shall not be on the bottom. Last hired, first fired. First single, last married. That's beneath. That's not normal. We call that normal. The ghetto, the slums, that's not normal. Apartment buildings is not normal. I'm going to give you an example. I live in an apartment building. On a high floor, you know what I'm saying, building. You have an apartment building. You have someone living on your right, on your left, above you, and under you. That's not normal. That's the cause. There's all kind of strike. There's congestion. Bus all packed up. You're on a bus, riding a bus, eight people, like this, for two hours on a bus. That's, a, that's not normal. That causes strife. That causes contention. Barely any sunlight. High-rise buildings. No trees. Plenty of garbage. But barely any trees. Dog crap all over the sidewalk. That's beneath us. That's not normal. That's like Martin, Marvin Gaye said, this ain't living. Right. That was what, the 70s? Yeah. Yeah. It still ain't living. It's not normal. But Israel has taken the curses and made them a blessing. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a sickness. It's not, it's not right. You know, okay. Yeah, man. Yo, listen. I can't live in a building that, that I can't jump through if, it, if there's a fire. You understand? <laughs> it got to be at least two, three floors. I got to be able to jump and land on my feet. You know, the first time I went to, to Deacon Asaph and um, Item Building, I went, in, I went out on that little thing out there. I was like, I got dizzy. I had to go back inside. <laughs> like, what the hell is this? You know, because that's how Esau lived. That's why the scripture says, he that dwelleth in the cliffs of the rocks. You understand? Because the whole city set up like cliffs and rocks, man. High habitation, whose, whose habitation is high. You know, but we, Jacob, we don't like living in high habitations. That's for Esau. Yeah, these stories the most. Yeah. Right. That rock climbing. right. But I want to expound on what you was talking about with the people beside you, on top of you, on the bottom of you. Right. That's a bad environment because yeah. you, the noise, yeah. people blasting music, <laughs> all types of craziness going on, traffic and all that. These things make you crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, noise all the time, can't get to sleep. Boom, 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 boom. That's all you hear. Your windows are rattling. Y'all don't realize. <laughs> Y'all don't realize that, like in certain neighborhoods, because Esau knows that that environment is unhealthy. That's why in certain neighborhoods he has what is known as noise ordinances. Okay, that's why he does it because even in hospitals, you got people that's trying to heal from their sicknesses. And what's the first thing they tell you? Quiet heals. Shh. If you make it too much noise, they throw your behind out of there, disturbing the peace and all that other stuff. But meanwhile, you go home and you got rocket ships, trains crashing into each other, all types of stuff. Here, red top, red top, blue top. Blah, blah. How many want? How many want? Red you know, top, that's drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right. that's what I'm talking about. That's gonna drive you insane. Go ahead, man. Oh, red top. <laughs> Go ahead. I heard all that craziness. Y'all laughing at me. So, who who know, who know what I'm talking about? Huh? Look at that. Look at everybody know. That's the curses. Everybody know. Everybody know. White folks be like, "What are you talking yeah. about? What, what are you talking about? I put the drugs there. I don't, I don't know nothing don't about that. <laughs> you know." All they know about is the paper boy riding a bicycle and right. giving them the paper while they keep on going. Yep. Paper route. Boom. That's it. Yeah, that's the noise they That's the only noise he get. That. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. If that, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God. Here again. If that thou hearken not. If you, if you listen. Go ahead. Which. Excuse me. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, go ahead. and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, 
to go after other gods to serve them. Yeah. But it shall come to pass. You know this one. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake now, thee. I'm going to skim through these. We read these all the time. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the city. You know field. the curses. That's the ghettos, the slums, the, the stores, the, the bad, bad schools. You know that's the curse in the city. All right? And it says, cursed in the field, going to the plantations, cotton, cocoa, indigo, tobacco. You know, you, know, you know this already. Right? Who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Right. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Who doesn't, know what I'm, who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Who does not know what I'm talking about? Right, the plantations. Go ahead. Verse um, 23. We're going to skim through it. And, the, and thy heaven, 23, and thy heaven that is over thee, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, right. and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Shackles, that's chains. Go ahead. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. No rain. Opposite of blessing. Opposite of rain in due season is the opposite. Go ahead. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Turning things upside down. The blessing was the other way around. We make them go against us and they go seven ways, scatter seven ways. Now it's vice versa. Go ahead. And shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. We are going to be scattered among all nations of the earth, all kingdoms of the earth. Go ahead. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. There were times they didn't bury us. Left our bodies there for the birds to eat on and peck on. They didn't bury us. No right. that, that, was, that was 70 AD when yeah. the Romans came in and, and destroyed us. That yep. tells you about that in the book of Psalms. Psalms how they yeah. just left our bodies out there on the ground. Yep. Yeah. The Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with the emeralds. Emeralds is hemorrhoids. That's what that is. <laughs> emeralds is hemorrhoids. Big behind, big bump in your behind, bleed, mess you up. Go ahead. And with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not. Yeah, you be burning. That's the itch. Go ahead. Whereof thou canst not be healed. No, no, no medications. Go ahead. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. That's the Negro. And blindness uh -huh. and astonishment of heart. Yep, that's the depressed Negro, that's the, the gangs, that's the violence, that's the self-hatred. All of that is madness and blindness of heart. Lack of knowledge of self, all the above. Go ahead. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. You'll be, a, you'll, be, you'll be eyes wide shut, basically. Walking around blind spiritually. As if, as, if you're, as if you're in a dark place. Go ahead. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. You're going to fail. Fail, failure after failure after failure. No blessings. Go ahead. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Let me give an example of spoiled. You had black people, Jakes, that were creating inventions during slavery. They were creating inventions specifically to get their freedom, and they would lose the patents. White folks would claim, I built that. Then build a damn thing. Yeah, I made this, I made that. didn't make nothing. We get spoiled. No awards for that. We got freedom, if that. Okay, they would use us. So we got spoiled evermore. Go ahead. Thou, sh me. thou shalt betroth a wife. No, you missed something. No man. Oh, sorry. And no, verse 29. And thou shalt grow up at noonday as the blind group of the darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Uh -huh. And no man shall save thee. And no man. The men who rose up and tried to save us could not do it. They could not do it. Bookman tried. Mega Evers tried. Martin Malcolm tried. Nat Turner tried. They failed. They tried, but they failed. Go ahead. You know what's amazing about that verse you just read? That's telling you what a savior is supposed to do. Yep. Okay, so what does Esau need to be saved from? Because the scripture here, read that verse again. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind groupeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. That's hell. That condition that he just read there mm -hmm. is hell. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. That's continual hell. Go ahead. And no yeah. man shall save thee. So those people that's in those conditions are looking for a savior. Yep. So how in the world could the savior come and save you out of that situation and save the damn slave master at the same time? You sick in the head. 
and, and you know what? You know what heavy with this verse that we just read? Yeah, it said that we're going to be oppressed and spoiled evermore. Evermore. Mm -hmm. And guess what? This curse is on us today. That's why you see we being oppressed right through. Mm -hmm. You understand? You hear about what happened in Flint. You hear in a about a lot of you seen a lot of sisters getting beat down by cops a lot of brothers getting beat down by cops evidence being planted on brothers brothers getting put to jail for life you know our people is being oppressed every day in this system and why because god says that's a curse that's going to be upon us yeah verse 30 thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her i'll right, take your wife from you Go ahead and lay with her. That's happened in the slave. That's what happened in the plantation. They'll take your wife for the night. You saw that in Toby as a slave. Brother just got married. He's happy. The guy says, the guy says, I want that one. Tell Samuel I want that his wife. When she comes back all ashamed, he's mad as hell. It's clear. Root, the roots, I believe, also happen in that show also. Go ahead. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell there. If you lived in a shack. For example, even today you have black folks on the, um, in Ephraim. Doing all kind of building, all kind of stuff, high buildings and so forth, and go back to the, to the ghetto. Same thing. Build there, not dwell therein. Same thing. Go ahead. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Yeah, they'll take it from you. Go ahead. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes. Happens to the northern kingdom on this side of the world. Go ahead. And thou shalt not eat thereof. Right. Thine ass shall be violently taken away. Kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. Mm. Same thing. Go ahead. Thy what? Shall violently taken away be from before thy face. Your ass. So it goes back to your mule. You know, black folks always begging about 40 acres in a mule. Gad has a 40 acres and two mules. They say, hell no, even more. You ain't getting nothing. You ain't getting that. No, it's no mule. They get violently taken from you. Go ahead. And shall not be restored to thee. You will not receive reparations. It will not be restored to you is what he's saying. That's a curse. You're not getting reparations at all. It will not be restored to you is what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue none them. None to get them back for you. None. Let's get real quick. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, before we move on. You know, if you listen on, if, if you all was paying attention to the news this week, there's um, somebody that's running for mayor. I think is in. Okay, okay. You got it. Right now. Go to the I did it. I got it. Go to Washington Times. That's why I brought this up. This is the kind of man you want in your kingdom, right? Okay. Die here with him. While he's getting that real quick, a lot of times I'll say things like, you're sick as hell, and you hear me say that. I'm speaking to those of our people that have that mentality. So I do want to get on your nerves. Not necessarily anybody in here, but I know the camera's on. You follow me? But I do want this, this truth to pierce your brain. Right there. Yeah. This is Florida mayoral. We got to read, Liam. Yes, Florida mayoral candidate Paul Kanjimi tells activists to go back to Africa. Now, they don't mean that because what, what would their world be without us? Uh, that's, 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 that's a ranting maniac. This guy's an idiot. But a lot of them say that nonsense. They say that. Read it. Go ahead. Yeah. A Florida mayoral candidate, candidate's racist tirade has gone viral after he told a group of activists to go back to Africa during a, a mayoral forum Tuesday. Right. Long shot St. Petersburg mayoral candidate Paul Kanjimi. He ain't winning. Go ahead. Made the comments while addressing rival Jesse Neville, a white supporter of the socialist Yuru movement, which seeks slavery reparations to, for African Americans. This is not happening. Go ahead. Mr. Neville, you and your people, you talk about reparations, Mr. Kanjimi said. According to the video of the outburst, outburst, the reparations that you talk about, Mr. Neville, your people already got your reparations. How? Your reparations came in the form of a man named Barack Obama. You see how they think? You see how Esau thinks? There's your reparations right there, nigga. Barack Obama. Be happy with that. That's all he says. That's basically what he's saying to us. That, that goes back to that euphoria. Oh, a black president. Yay, things would be better. Exactly. It didn't happen. It got worse. Go ahead. 
The comment elicited outrage from the audience. With one woman screaming, get out of here. Go ahead. <laughs> Mr. Kanjimi continued, my advice to you. Let's play the video. Play the video. The white man said, planes leave every hour. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Planes leave every hour. Go ahead. My advice to you, my advice to you, if you don't like it here in America, planes leave every hour from Tampa Airport. Go back to Africa. Go back to Africa. Go back. Play it. Let's see if it's a lie. Mr. Neville, you and your people, you talk about reparations. The reparations that you talk about, Mr. Neville, your people already got your reparations. Your reparations, your reparations came in the form of a man named Barack Obama. My advice to you, my advice to you, if you don't like it here in America, planes leave every hour from Tampa Airport. Go back to Africa. Go back to Africa. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Go back. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how Esau thinks about it. Now I want you to go to the comments. I'm talking to YouTube. I want you to see the comments. Now this guy's beating is abusive. You see a mugshot right there. There's mugshot right there in that picture with the orange on. He was locked up for nonsense. But let's go to the comments real fast. Let's just watch the comments, man. Just read the top ones. Let me read the, the um, responses. It's true, they also got the reparations in the form of social handouts, welfare, hiring quotas. The balance sheet is zero after the Civil War, where more than half a million white people died to save you people. Suck it up or go back to Africa, butt hurt losers. Go down. And they say racism don't exist. Only a small percentage of this country has descendants of slaves, and only a small percentage of the white people and descendants of slave owners. If you don't like racism, Stop putting entire races into the same categories based upon. So he's saying all of us weren't slaves or pop, um, descendants of slaves, and all of them weren't slave owners. Yeah, trying to, to white, yeah, saying trying to save himself. Yeah. Effing niggers, they all only ask for that reparations sh because you know the white man is has tolerance. They don't ask for reparations to the original Jewish slave traders because those rats would not give a second thought to to decimate them. Wow, Damn. he's got a point. Someone either might says. Go down. Go down. Let's get to the point. Let's find some meaner ones. This man's my hero. I wish all white people would think like him. Then we would have a greater country again. Sign Trump. There you go. Oh, man. Are y'all getting this? Yes, Jake, Jake wrote that. Go down. I want, I want the heathen comments. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. honest heathen comments. Mm -hmm. Go down. Awesome, unappreciative blacks can go back. Negroes need America. American doesn't need Negroes. Wow. Here's my, okay, don't go to that one. <laughs> <laughs> because the continent, I don't go. No, go down, go down. Y'all might not realize this, but as, 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 as stinging as these comments are, do y'all realize that this is medicine? That's castor oil. That's that medicine that we never like. Let's go back to them toes and Daniel. Right. The toes, the clay, and the iron. We never get along. He is a great, he is a guy, he is a, I guess he's a great guy. I would vote for a great, I would vote for a great man. Go down. Negroes don't deserve a cent. Nothing racist about that, what he said. Negroes don't deserve a cent. If they want reps, they can go to Africa and ask for it. Too many blacks are effing, uh, so effing, in, are so effing entitled. Go back to effing Africa if you don't effing like the United States. Entitled to What? This mofo got my vote. Go down. Go down. Okay, wow. I'm gonna break his neck. Go down. Go down, go down. Uh, we should stop with Rosewood, Florida, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm not sure what he means by that. That's confusing. Go down. That's all I want. So just the, the comment. You read the comments on your own. You'll see many honest heathens who I like. I like honest heathens. I, the ones that smile on your face. The United has Wow, the United States has coddled Negroes since the 1960s. We have come to walk around them like, like on broken glass. It has escalated tremendously since 
the eight years of our first racist affirmative action president, try to think back before 2008. If you, if you do, you will remember that Obama has fomented all this talk of racism. Obama set back race relations 50 years. It not, does not take much to incite the Negro. Damn. Hey. They are the only race that riots, loots, and burns at the least provocation, if any at all. Wow. Now that's a We're the only right ones that there. riot and loot, really. Yo, How'd they get this land? There you go. Hey, they say they gave us Obama, right? Obama, Obama, what, what have Obama done for us? Nothing. The only thing he did, when he, the only thing that he going to be remembered for in history for, is legalizing homosexuality. Yep. You understand? That's what his name going to go down for in history for. You understand? Taking our civil rights and giving it to homos and feminists. That's let me, but hold it. Let me. So-called civil rights. Let me delve into what you said. What did o, what? The question was, what did Obama do? Let me tell you what happened. When with the eight years that Obama's been in office, and I'm not going to speak negative against the brother, but I'm going to say this here: by him being in office, and black folk didn't demand certain things out of him, that forever shut us up. Now that he's gone, you can't ask nobody for nothing. They say you had your own and you didn't ask for nothing. Shut the hell up. That's basically what he did. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about his presidency. That's what it did for black folk. If you did not demand to get things done while he was in office, you can shut the hell up now. So give you Trump. And you better not open your mouth to say anything. That's the point. Hey, and you see the comments that we're reading right here? Believe it or not, but a lot of, a lot of, all Edom think like that. Some of them might not be upfront with it, but they all think like that. They all think like the, the same, the same, the same thought that you're seeing in these comments right here. All of them think like that. So if any one of you all want to be in La La Land and think, oh, I got a nice, a nice white friend, you know, he, you know, me and him is cool. You know, he don't think like that. No, all of them think like that. You got to understand, white folks don't see the world the way we see it. Our eyes are different. They don't see things how we see it. So we're like, we're outraged. What? White folks, what's the problem? What did I say wrong? <laughs> they'll say the most offensive stuff to you. Why your hair look like that? I'm just asking. <laughs> you just ask, what the hell that mean? You just ask, asking what? And you all mad. They all, what's wrong? Why, Why is he so disturbed? What's wrong with him? You're what's, so going, what's going on, yeah. Biff? Biff, what's going on? Right, right. I don't know, Amber. I don't know. I'm just going on. <laughs> You're so emotional. <laughs> You're emotional. Stop being emotional. You're so emotional. Like Planet of the Apes. So emotional. Yeah. You're emotional. They say things, man. Trigger words. But they don't see things. Like, they're killing our people. They don't see what's wrong with that. He was, I felt threatened. Digging he, man, he shoot the guy eight times. The guy's on his stomach. I felt threatened. I was scared of him. They don't see what we see. That's why you can't have them in the kingdom. Right. They might have spirit ain't right. There's something wrong with them. They're made that way. Not just them, the women too. And their children, same way. White folks got, got what's it called the white privilege card that they all carry. Y'all follow me? So some of us that are thinking that they're liberals, which one of them will give up their white privilege card to save you? None of them. Right. So that's letting you know that they all think the same. Those Regardless of how smooth their, their words are smoother than oil, soft as butter. There's a fang with poison waiting to bite you in the head. The sister asked a question. Dre DeGroote asked, how many of you here would, would, would change places with the, with the treatment of blacks for yourselves? Not one white hand raised up. <laughs> Not one. <laughs> I heard a comedian bring that up. I'm trying to remember what his name was. And he said, and I'm rich. I think Chris it was Rock. Chris Rock. He said, I'm rich and I got money. <laughs> and the bum be like, he said, you would trade places with me? And he's in the gutter eating garbage, but he white. He said, no, nah, it's all right. I, I, I'll ride this white thing on out. <laughs> yeah. I'll ride this white one on out, yeah? Okay, we're going to say something. Yeah, um, <clears throat> there was a report in the news about um, a cop, a Muslim cop, I guess, or Jake, um, who's Muslim. He shot a, an Edomite woman yeah, I heard. In, in Minneapolis, and the results came back. The mayor told the sheriff, you know, I don't like the way you're conducting business. So he told the sheriff, yeah, you got to resign because he shot a white woman. Wow. Exactly. So I said, it, defend their people, get things done. Verse 32, Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. And the mere fact that it was, tele that it was publicized sent the message mm -hmm. to everywhere. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 38, 
Uh, no, chapter 20. 20, excuse me, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fear with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine That's hand. That's part of the curses. Remember, the blessing was have many children. This says you're going to lose your kids to somebody else. They're going to take them from you and give them to somebody else. Jump to verse uh, 43. The stranger that is in within thee shall get up above thee. Mean your very slave high. will become your master, is what he's saying. Read again. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Go ahead. He shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to Remember him. Remember the blessing, he'll, let, he'll borrow from us. Now it's the other way around. Chase Bank, Wachovia, or what? Slave, own, slave money, of course. Chase, from chasing niggas. Mm. <laughs> Wachovia, watch over niggas. <laughs> That's where money come from. Red. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. <laughs> 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee. Till thou be destroyed, Good. because thou hearkens not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded. Right, these curses are going to come upon you. Wherever you run, you try to run to Arabia, run to West Africa, run to Europe. You got slaves all across the board. You ran to China, you'll slave over there. Ran to Israel, ran to Israel. We, we knew the curses was chasing us. We knew. We fled as far as we could. Didn't work. We came to this side of the world. Curses came over here too in ships. That's conquistadors. Spaniards, British, French, Portuguese. Put them curses right over here with them. Get and run. Go ahead. And they, sh and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. A sign of who you are and what will happen. And, and your wonder as and why you're in this condition. Go ahead. And upon thy seed forever. And they'll pass on to your children until the time the Most High says enough. Go ahead. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. Go ahead. Therefore. Abundance of all things is everything and everyone on the planet. And the planet itself. We didn't want that. Ah, I'm good. I don't want that. I want this idol right here. This cup. That's better. It says so chose. Street chose stupidity. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against you thee. You shall serve your enemies to the Lord will send against you. Go ahead. In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until he have destroyed so, them. Until the yokes are no longer necessary. Not in your brain. Go ahead. No, no, jump down to verse, um, let me see what I want. Mm, 63 and 68. Verse 63. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. You know what we mean to rejoice? To be happy to do it. Because you we deserve it. I'm going to be happy to do this to you. Because y'all don't listen. Go ahead. And to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. How? Read verse 68. Let's see, how, let's see how. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Meaning into bondage again with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no your more land, again. Your land, your homeland. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye By shall... By way of those ships. Go ahead. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. For bondmen... And bond woman, and no man shall buy you. Buy meaning save or rescue you. Same thing again. So that's the curses. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. So we lost our kingdom. Ecclesiastes or Sirach 10 verse 8. Ecclesiasticus, or the book of Sirach, chapter 10 and verse 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit. Our people, go ahead. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. Our kingdom is translated from one, rulership is translated from one people to the next. Rulership is translated from one people to one other people. That's us. We lost it. Now other nations rule because of our evil among ourselves. Read it, read it again. Because of unrighteous dealing among ourselves, injuries, hurting each other, and riches got by deceit, robbing each other, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. All right. So let's go to Acts 1 and 6. Acts 
Acts 1, Acts 1 verse 6. So what did, the, what did the disciples ask? Did they ask for salvation for all people? The kingdom for all people? Let's see if they asked before the Messiah left us. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time... Will you at this time... Go ahead. Restore again... Stop. Restore again. Meaning establish again what was once established before. Restore again. Go ahead. The kingdom to Israel. Who's the, Israel, who's the kingdom belong to? Israel. Not the kingdom to everyone. The kingdom to all nations. The kingdom to Israel is what they're asking. Go ahead. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Meaning, I don't know and you don't, we, you don't know and I don't know. My Father knows. When he's ready, that's his time. I'll be back. And he flew up in the air like a superhero. That's a, he is a superhero. <laughs> he flew up in the air. All right? I'll be back. Whew. All right? So now let's go to Daniel 7 and 3. Hey, this scripture that we just read just went perfectly with the scripture we read before. Because the scripture that we read before in um, Sirach, it says because of our evil dealings mm -hmm. and our sins and so forth, the Mosai... He said, what he said? Translated. He translated the kingdom and gave it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, so now at this time, the apostles and them, they're asking Christ, will thou at this time give us back the kingdom? Because they understood that the kingdom was taken away from them. They wasn't ruling no more. Mm -hmm. All right? So this scripture, the, yo, it line up. This is perfect. Yep, we'll be right now. Daniel 7 verse 3. Translate from one kingdom to another. Watch. Daniel chapter 7, verse 3. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Go to Luke 21, 24. Let's see what that's called. The four great beasts represent the four major kingdoms that were going to rule. Babylon, Medo-Persian Empire, and Greece, or Greco-Roman Empire, the four. Babylon, um, Babylon Persia, Greece, Rome. What's this, what, are they, what is their time called? Luke 21, 24. Luke 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Israel, the, the violent take about force. Saying it again. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And there you shall be sold into your enemies for bond men and bond women, scattered up into all kingdoms of the earth. He's, he's repeating the curses. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the other nations. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the what? The times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Daniel is, the, is talking about the times of the Gentiles. America is an extension or rebirth of the Roman Empire. America is Rome reborn. That's what it is. It's part of the four beasts. America is part of the fourth beast. Yeah, so when the question says in the times of the read that last the, the bottom of that and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled what that part mean until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled somebody can tell me tell me what that part means put the microphone in one of those brothers hands Shalom, leadership. Shalom. How are you, brother? I'm all right. Um, Hit me. The times of the, uh, the Gentiles being fulfilled is basically everything that was written about them and all the uh, curses we would go through um, with the other nations ruling over us. Uh, uh, their time will be fulfilled after uh, our salvation, uh, World War III, is uh, in effect. So what is the message? You write about all that, but what is the message there about what the Most High is saying about the nations? Basically, their time is limited. Thank their you. rulership is That's limited. the answer. That's temporary. Can I read one scripture real quick? Give me Job chapter 14. <laughs> Job chapter 14, verse 4, 5. Yeah, 4 and 5. You said verse 4, Deacon? Said, yeah, start at verse 4. Job chapter 14 and verse 4. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean. The Edomite, the so-called white man, was made to be the devil. The Most High made him unclean in terms of getting the kingdom. 
the most I said who, he's asking the question, who can make the white man a Christian? I'm going to just say it like that. Yeah. Who can make him the, uh, a recipient of Christ's salvation when God made him the devil that the Bible speaks of? You can't change that. No matter how much, no matter if you sleep with him, give babies to him, marry him, that's nothing that's going to change. They are the seed of Satan. You cannot change that. That's not hate talk. That's what God said. Read. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. No, none of you can save the white man, <laughs> basically. Yep. None of you can save him. Go ahead. Seeing his days Hold are... Hold it. Seeing what? His days are determined. The number of his months are with these. The number of his months are with God. Seeing that his days are determined. That's what we was reading earlier. The times of the Gentiles. Seeing that his days are determined by God. Read. Thou has appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. God has appointed this man's boundaries. That's what bounds means. God has appointed his time limit that he cannot go past that. So you can love him to death. <laughs> he ain't getting the kingdom. Okay. I'm done. You want to deal with the next, the next verse? verse. Go ahead. Turn from him. Move your power from him is what he's saying. Go ahead. That he may rest. That he may stop. Go ahead. Till he shall accomplish as in hireling his day. A hireling is a temporary worker. There you go. Temporary job. The white man, the so-called white man, these nations are a temporary setback. That's what I call them. A temporary setback is what they are. Y'all like that? Y'all like that, right? That's some fuel for you. You put that in your in your magazine when you're on the street. <laughs> Daniel 7, verse 12. Let's go more to that temporary. He's going to last forever. That's what Negroes say. Daniel 7 and verse 12. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 12. As no, read verse 11. I like 11. I beheld them. Excuse me. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. Uh huh. Going to Edom. Go ahead. I beheld America, even. America. Go ahead. I beheld even till the beast was slain, mm -hmm. and his body destroyed. How? And given to the burning flame. Nuclear fire. That's America. Next verse. As concerning the rest of the beasts. The other nations. Remember, Edom's a ringleader, which is America. Go ahead. They had their dominion. They had their rulership. Their their um their kingdom. Go ahead. Taken away. Temporary setbacks. Go ahead. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. Go ahead. I saw it in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Came with other angels. And came to the ancient of days. That destroys the Trinity doctrine. You see the Son approaching his Father, not the Father approaching himself. Go ahead. And they brought him near before and him. And the angels brought him, carried him near before his father. The angels brought the son to his father, not carried the father to himself, like the father to schizo or something. <laughs> Stupid, nonsensical doctrines. Go ahead. And there was given him dominion. And there was given him, his son, dominion. And glory. Power. And a kingdom. A kingdom, watch this. That all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Go ahead. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. Which is not temporary. Go ahead. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. It's forever. It's not temporary. Like the time of the Gentiles is temporary. Now it says, he says, he shall, it was given him dominion, glory, and the kingdom, right? You want to say something to get us up? Uh, finish your point, because I'm going to, I don't want to. That was going to go somewhere else. Oh, okay. No, I, then I need this. I Read verse 11 again. I want to show you how powerful the Most High is and to show you that this so-called white man is nothing. Read. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. The same beast is going to be slain. I want to get into how it's going to get done. And his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. The question that I want to ask you all is where is this burning flame going to come from? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Where's the burning flame going to come from? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you how powerful the Lord is. 
Because we just read what we read earlier where the Most High said, I have set his bounds that he cannot pass. Let me show how great the Most High is. So where is the flame going to come from? Shalom. Shalom. It's going to come from a thermonuclear fire. Yes, that's exactly right. Where Now, it's going to come from thermonuclear fire from what in particular? Well, from, from the nations that are, that are ready to destroy America. Okay. But who's the one that got the weapons? Esau. Esau, yeah. The Most High caused him to build the weapons to his own destruction. You see that? The Most High made him build those things. I don't want to make them. Well, you're going to make them. <laughs> but I don't think it. I, I, I. You're going to build them. And you're going to press the button on each other. <laughs> and you're going to fulfill my prophecy regardless of what you say. Now you're talking about nuclear disarmament and trying to get rid of them. That's just talk. The most I said, you're going to press the button. You, I'm going to call it. That's what he said when in the scripture when he said, I have, I have created the smith that blow off the coals in the fire, that bring it forth an instrument for his work. So he made the smith, meaning the scientist, to build the weapons to his own destruction. God bent his mind to make him build that thing. And here we worry. The most I made him build his own weapon to destroy himself. And at the same time, we're going to be delivered when that go down. Go ahead, Deacon. That's beautiful. Yep. Let's go to, um, read again, the bottom, the top again, the top of uh, verse 14. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Should serve him, right? Now, let's get Psalms 2 and 6. Psalms chapter 2 and verse 6. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Talk about Christ. Go ahead. He said, yet have I done it. Because regardless of what the nations try to do, he said, regardless of what you try to do, I'm still going to put Israel up. That's why I'm saying, yeah, what are you reading? Psalms 2? Psalm chapter 2, verse yeah, 6. That's what. That's it. That's it. Go ahead, Deacon. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Go ahead. I will declare... The decree. I will declare the law, the decree, the promise. Go ahead. The Lord has said unto me, thou art my son. This is Christ speaking through David in a psalm regarding what the father told him, which goes back to what he said to him in Daniel. Go ahead. This day have I begotten thee. Uh-huh. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. I will give you what? The heathen. For thine inheritance. Remember it said, all people, nations, and languages should serve him. Same thing. Go ahead. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. The whole planet for your possession. Go ahead. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Mm. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Why? Why does he have to do that? Because the nations are not going to stand by and let some nigga from heavens rule over them. That's, some, that's why. Their pride is too great, but I'm just going to be honest. That's what it is. But that's what makes it good. Yeah, it makes it great. <laughs> I want them to rebel. Please, don't just give up so easy. Resist. Stop resisting. <laughs> I want them to resist so I can say stop resisting. <laughs> <laughs> right. You understand? That's, they're not going to allow themselves. You understand? This man has ruled since the time of the Greeks. He's ruled for hundreds of years, hundreds of years. Then he lost it. Then he got it back at the Renaissance. He goes, I'm not going to lose this. Right. I've come too far. I've done too much. I will not allow myself to be subject to some Negro from the heavens. That, I said I would say this, right? And what you're saying is correct. That's what the Most High mean in Romans 9. And it proves that is the comments in the video. That's why I showed you that. <laughs> where their mind is. You reparations for you foot four. Now they, they know now the demon is not, the demon that's in them is not going to tell them. Yeah, they do deserve that. Mm. It's not in them to believe. The most that. I don't want it it's, that way. No, it's not I want it. I'm gonna share real quick something. Go to a, it's a movie called Pacific Rim about robots and aliens. I want you go to the trailer part two. They put things in movies on purpose. Show you where his mind is. Watch, watch this Pacific Rim. Two, it's corny, but I also want us to certain scene, a certain thing that the woman says, the narrator says. Pacific Rim, real quick, part two coming out. Good, well, I like one. One's all right. Two is kind of corny. Now, I want you to, yeah. 
play the trailer and watch. This is what the what the woman, the narrator, says regarding now. Part one's about these monsters that come from the, uh, come from underwater and they attack the earth. So they built big machines to fight against them, called Jaegers, to fight against the machines, whatever. And they seal the whole close of part one. Somehow it opens again. I don't know how it opens again. But part two, they do, they're, they're basically showcasing the machines and what they did to, to um, deliver themselves against the machines. Watch this. This is what she says. Make sure it's loud so you can hear it. What is a Jaeger? A Jaeger is the pinnacle of human invention. When the monsters came, we did not wait for heroes to fall from the sky and save us. Stop! We saved we did not wait for heroes to come from the sky and save us. Sonic just said Hebrews. Sonic just said Hebrews. Well, who knows? He might have. But the point, we, but go back a little bit. She might have said that. Who knows? Go back. Subliminals. Press play. When the monsters came, we did not wait for heroes to fall from the sky and save us. We saved ourselves. Innovation. Save ourselves. Stop. We saved ourselves. We don't wait for heroes to come from the sky. And what's that for? What's the meaning of saying that? Because they're taking shots. Esau always takes shots to the Lord. That's why in Daniel, read Daniel again, verse 11. This is why the most I says this. Read verse 11 again. That's all I want. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed. And given to the burning flame. Why, why his great words, he spoke words against the Lord. And he would do it subliminally or openly. Whether through evolution or through his movies. Waiting for a, 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 um, a hero to come from the sky and save us. We save ourselves. Who made, him, who made this horn speak the way he's speaking? Think deep now. Who's making this horn speak rough like what he just read there? The Most High. Because the Most High wants a good fight. That's what he's saying in Romans when he says, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up. Yep. He raised this, this so-called white man to be vicious, nasty, the meanest, toughest, because he wants to smash him in our presence. Mm -hmm. so, when we, so when the Lord destroys him, the message is going to be, I am the one that's God. But I'm raising you up to be feared. I'm raising you up to be worshipped and for you to be uh, causing terror all over the place. Like Egypt. Right, exactly, because that's, that's why I use the word same there, because he was talking about Pharaoh, and he's also talking about Esau, because this is in the book of Romans I'm talking about with Paul. So he said, even for the same reason, have I raised you up the way I did Pharaoh, so when I destroy you, everybody will know that I am God, and besides me, there is no other God. Right. So that's the reason why the Lord raised him up and caused him to speak evil, caused him to speak in mockery against the Lord, so when the Most High smashes him, you're going to know where the real power is. And that's how his name going to be declared all over the earth, all over again. He raised Egypt so high, they called themselves God kings. They got so arrogant. God king. That's the name their mindset. Well, Egypt was, it was the America of its time. Psalms 2 again, verse 9. The book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 9. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Who's it them? The heathen for our inheritance. Go ahead. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. That's the elders of Israelites, leaders, men, go ahead. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. He's talking to us. That's all I want. Now, get Romans 8. So Psalms, he says, I will give them the heathen for thine inheritance. And Daniel said the exact same thing. Romans 8, verse 16. A little faster for time. Romans 8, 16. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Spirit is the Bible. Bear witness with our spirit, our minds, that we are the children of God. It lets us know, based upon the curses, who God was talking to. The conditions of Israel is referring to us. So the Bible speaks to us. Go ahead. That we are the children of God. Go ahead. And if children. And if we are the children of God. Go ahead. Then as. Then we are heirs. Go ahead. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. We read what Christ was inherited in Psalms 2. The heathen for thine inheritance. And we are joint heirs of Christ. So whatever he gets, we get also. That's what he's saying. Joint heirs. 
Go ahead. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We may be glorified together. Remember it says the kingdom and glory and dominion were given to him. So we get the same exact glory. Now let's go to uh, Esther 16. In the Apocrypha. Those people who say the children of God is everybody. Okay. Esther chapter 16. See what the heathen says. Esther 16, chapter 16 and verse um, 15. This is Esther in the Apocrypha. Chapter 16, verse 15. But we find that the Jews... Whom this wicked wretch hath delivered to utter destruction. Talk about Haman, go ahead. Are no evildoers, uh -huh. but live by most just laws. Live by most just, just laws, go ahead. And that they be children of the most high and most mighty living God, who hath ordered the kingdom both unto us and to our progenitors in the most excellent manner. So the heathen, so the heathen Artaxerxes acknowledged that our God is the true God. We're the children of God. That's how I went there. Let's go to Revelations 2.27. And if you're children of God, then heirs, joint heirs. And when he said, you will have the heathen for your inheritance, and you shall smash with a rod of iron. That was Psalms 2, verse 9. Revelations 2 and 27. So what does a joint heir get to do? Let's see. Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter... Give verse 26. I'm sorry. 26. Revelation 2 and verse 26. Uh-huh. And he that overcometh... He that overcomes, that gets delivered, saved, go ahead. And keepeth my works unto the end. And keeps the commandments unto the end, go ahead. To him will I give power over the nations. No, with the nations. I will give power over the nations. Beside them. Power over the nations. See the bias? Over them. Power over the nations, over the nations. There's no equality with God, none. Only dominion order. One nation rules, the others don't. That's how God deals. Go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Uh -huh. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Go ahead. Even as I received of my father. So the same promise to receive from his father in Psalms 2. When David spoke of it, the same honor we receive if we overcome. Same exact honor. Joint heir saying the same exact thing. Let's go to um, Acts 3 and 21. Acts 3, verse 21. Acts chapter 3, verse 21. Whom the heaven... No, verse 20. Verse 20. And ye shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, uh -huh. whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Read it again. Whom the heaven must receive... Stop. The heaven must receive goes back into Acts 1 when he flew up into the heavens until he returns, according to the order of his father. Until Read it again. Until... The times of restitution of all things. Until the times of the restitution or restoration, reparation of all things. Us ruling originally. The kingdom being restored again to Israel is what it's going into. That's the restitution. Go ahead. Which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So we, read that, we read one of them in Daniel. That rulership was promised to us in the very beginning of time. From the very beginning of time, into the times of restitution. Go to Isaiah 14. Man, no, let's go to Job. I don't want to forget that. Got to go to Job. Job 20. And I want verse. I got time. Job 20 and verse um, 5. No, Job verse four. Twenty verse four. Knowest that excuse me, knowest thou not this of old? Since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short. The triumphing or ruling rulership of the wicked 
It's short. It's temporary. We read that earlier. Like in Job, um, Deacon Yasa mentioned earlier, Deacon Yasa, about them being temporary in Job. 14 to 5. Read again. That the triumphing of the wicked is short. Edom is the wicked. It's short. Go ahead. And the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. They'll say one thing and they do another. Their time is but for a moment. Go ahead. Though his excellency mount up to the heavens. And it does. It goes in space. He's up there on the moon, on Mars, satellites all over the place, space stations. His glory mounts up to the heavens. Excellency who, mounts up to the heavens. Who, who's, who, whose stuff is that up there? Esau's. That's his excellency. Literally mounting up to the heavens. Yep. Mm. Negroes don't own that stuff. Nope. <laughs> Go ahead. And his head reach unto the clouds. He's in the space. He's flying, he's flying in the sky too. Go ahead. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. He's going to die like his own filth. Go ahead. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Where'd he go? What's the, Daddy, what's the Edomite? Uh, nothing you need to concern yourself That's with. That's the scripture that I was talking about earlier in the earlier class. When the Most High said that the way they have drank upon us and how we've become, it says that we shall be as though we had not been. That's what the Most High going to do to them when you read Obadiah, verse 15 yeah, and 16. That. Oh, that's later. coming? Yeah, that's oh, okay. coming too. That's the part there. Read that last, that last part of that verse again. They shall perish like they what? They shall perish. Excuse me. And yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. Dung is bowel movement. Mm -hmm. That's what dung is. Dung is bowel movement. Doo -doo. And after your doo-doo. That's a, that's a clean way of saying it. And it dissolves. It goes back into the earth. Yep. That's it. That's how this man going to be. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Where does he look like? Where is he? I have, have, have a display in a museum somewhere. There's a display. So you mean to tell me they ain't going to be looking for The Bachelor on TV? Nah. <laughs> nah they ain't going to find that. They ain't going to find that? Nah. It's going to be over with? Next verse. Going to say it. He shall fly away as a dream. Oh, he was in captivity? Yeah. When? We rule so well. I remember having no. I was in slavery. You know, white folks saw. I didn't own no slaves. This is that's the same mindset. Same mindset we're gonna have. Go ahead. He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Cause he's gonna be killed off. Go ahead. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Here today, a nightmare. Here today, gone tomorrow. Go ahead. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. He's going to leave his land. He's going to be dead. Go ahead. His children shall seek to please the poor. He's going to serve us. Go ahead. And his hand shall restore their goods. Go ahead. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. He's never changed. He's been the same way since the very beginning. From the time his time as a Greek to a Roman to a Spaniard to a Portuguese to now. He has never changed. It never will change. Go ahead. Which shall lie down with him in the dust. He's gonna die that way. Die the same way he was born. Go ahead. The wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue. Because they say things subtle. They're not, they're not open often, oftentimes. That's why I say I like, that's why I always say I like honest heathens. The ones who try to be slick and, and cunning, those would be scared, those would be you'd be wary of. That's Christianity. That, yep. Read that statement again, his, the, that part there that the deacon is talking about. Verse 12. The wickedness be sweet in his mouth. Wickedness be sweet in his mouth. That's Christianity. Mm -hmm. You go on to church and you hear sweetness. But, it's a, it, but, but, but what the most I call it? Wickedness. Mm -hmm. Because you're sitting in there and your brains are being injected with Christianity, which is poison. Mm -hmm. And it's killing our people wholesale. That. Though he hide it under his tongue. Watch this. Though he spare it. Because he won't say what he wants, what he's thinking openly. He spares it. Go ahead. And forsakes it not. But, yes, but what he's thinking, he executes. Go ahead. But keep it still within his mouth. Uh huh. Yet his meat in his bowels is turned. It is the gall of asp within him. The most I'm going to have him vomit up all he's taken, all that he swallowed, including us, devoured us, and swallowed. He's going to have the most I'm going to have him throw all that up. Lose it. Go ahead. What is, is the, the gall of asp right. within him? Mm. What is asp? ASP. Do y'all really know what an asp is? ASP. Put it up there. How many of y'all know what an asp is? How many of y'all don't know? Look at that. 
Put it up there. No, not 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 Microsoft, whatever that is. That's it. Snake. That's it. Do you realize that the venom from an asp is the worst venom you can? It's instant death. <laughs> okay, cruel venom. There's another another verse that talks about their their words is like the poison of a serpent, and that's the cruel venom of asp. That's a seriously poisonous snake. You use one drop of that, and you're dead instantly. Boom. Yep. All right. Go ahead, Deacon. 15. He has swallowed down riches. Yeah, he stole them. He swallowed down riches, especially ours. Go ahead. And he shall vomit them up again. Yeah, his, his stomach is turned. Go ahead. God shall cast them out of his belly. The most I'm going to make him throw them up. Go ahead. He shall suck the poison of asp. The viper's tongue shall slay him. Go ahead. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. The promised land. He will not see it. He's not getting in there. That's, right. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. That which he labored for, that which he labored. That which he worked so hard to acquire. Go ahead. For shall he restore. Reparations. That's when. Shall he restore? Go ahead. And shall not swallow it down. And he's not going to hold nothing back. Whatever he owes, going to give it back in full. I'll give you back half. No, I don't want half. Give me the whole thing. Go ahead. According to his substance shall the restitution be. According to his substance, all he has shall be the restitution. All he has, we're going to get in full. Whatever he has now, we're going to take all of it away from him. Go ahead. Not, this two, not, not just some reparation, some money. No, no, we want everything he has. Everything he has. Go ahead. And he shall not rejoice therein. Because he had nothing left for himself. Go ahead. Because he has oppressed and have forsaken the poor. Uh -huh. Because he has violently taken away in house which he buildeth not. It, uh, that's not what he does? Read it again. Because, because he, he has violently taken away in house which he built it not. He had violently taken, violently taken away a house that he has not built. He conquered this land, the same thing. He did the same thing in Jerusalem. Nothing new under the sun. So what he took away is going to restore in full. That's God's reparations. Not the white man's reparations. Here, here, nigga. Here's 20 million. Here you go. You can go buy some chicken. That's what I was going to go back to. Cadillacs and chicken. And Versace and, and freaking Louis Vuitton. He'll get it back in days. How long a dollar lasts in an eagle's hand? Five, uh, uh, what, five hours? Money's gone? Imagine five million. He'll get it back in no time. You might as well give it to him. You're giving it to a negro that's going back in the white man's hands, going back in his hands anyway. He goes, and you guys are right, and your minds are right, and you repent on you, Israel, then I give reparations. Then I give it to you. Right now, no. You ain't getting that now. You're too simple. Isaiah 14, verse 1. 14, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 14, and verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Why yet? Because Israel is so rebellious that the Most High still will have mercy upon us anyway. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. Set so us in our own land. Go ahead. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And the heathen will be joined to us. Go ahead. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Because we have no other options. Go ahead. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. This goes back to Amos 9 and 11. This is Amos 9 and 11 all over again. And the nation's cleaving. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. We will take them captives whose captives we were. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to rule. I go back to Daniel. We shall rule over our oppressors. Go ahead. If we're going to rule over our oppressors, your oppressor ain't going in the kingdom like you're going. Right. Your oppressor and you can't be saved with the same salvation. Because the Lord said that oppressor that ruled over you. You're going to rule over him. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear. 
And from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So we're going to get rest. Not all nations. We, he's going to give us rest. Not all nations rest. Rest from what? What they do? They ain't work hard. There wasn't no bondage. That verse right there told you who the Israelites are. If y'all picked it up. Read that bottom of the third verse again. And from thy fear and from thy hard bondage. Read the, verse, read the whole verse. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. If you don't know who the thee is, the verse is going to tell you. It, it shall come to pass that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow. Let's say we don't know who it's talking about. Keep and, and from thy fear. And from thy fear. We still don't know who it's talking about. Go ahead. And from the hard bondage. That part of the verse right there tells you what it's talking about. Because it's, it's letting you know a particular bondage. Who suffered hard bondage? That's clear. Hard bondage. The Most High is letting you know, listen, I'm talking about you. That's why it says in Daniel's, have, upon no other people have suffered the way we suffered. Daniel's, you know the verse I'm talking about, right? It says, upon the whole heaven, under the whole heaven have not, have not been that has been done upon Jerusalem. Okay. So the hard bondage is letting you know he ain't talking about no so-called six million rats. They ain't talking about that. Hard bondage is talking about yokes of irons and whips and slave ships. That's what it's talking about. And our, and our brothers and sisters in the islands being murdered wholesale, butchered up, lynched, burned, castrated. That's what it's talking about, hard bondage. Wherein thou was made to serve, because we were made to serve this hard bondage Right here in this Babylon, which is what this chapter is going into. Mm -hmm. Go to Isaiah 60, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. And their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Read again. And, thy, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. The sons of strangers. You remember the comment that God made? He said, now not every black person was a descendant of slaves, and not every white person was a descendant of slave owners. Well, I got news for you. You're going to save it regardless. It don't, it don't change a damn thing. You, you go on and slave regardless. Read again, because guess what? Not all of us in here was in the, no, well, I can't even say that. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. Read verse 10 again. I'm not going to say it. Verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. And their kings, the elite of them, shall be our ministers. Servants. Go ahead. For in my wrath I smote thee. Go ahead. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Isaiah 14 verse 1, but I will have yet have mercy upon Israel. Go ahead. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. What for? They shall not be shut day nor night. Uh-huh, go ahead. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. The wealth. Forces means wealth. The wealth of the Gentiles. Go ahead. And that their kings may be brought. We, we, we don't want their trailer trash. We want the elite. We want the Trumps, the Prince Williams, the Hannity, the Combs, O'Reilly's, DuPont's, Bilderbergs, Rothschilds. We want them. Clinton's. Martha Stewart's. We want them. Right. And listen, this is reparation that we're reading about yeah, here. Exactly. Yep. This right here we're reading about, this is reparation. They're going to bring all their wealth up to, to us. You understand? They're going to serve us. That's our reparation. We yep. don't want no. I don't want no 40 acres and a mule. You understand? We don't want that because the scriptures already tell us, listen, you're going to get your reparations. Hey, I want to put the elite, the elite Edomites, put them on a three-piece suit and make them plow the fields. <laughs> I want them to be sharp. <laughs> I want them to be dead. On a three-piece suit, get in that field and plow. That's what I want to see. Shoes on. With the shoes on. I make him shine his shoes every time he finish. <laughs> Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. So they refuse to get put to death. That's what the Bible says. They refuse and they will refuse. 
That's why I said Rod and Vine, you're going to bash them to pieces. A lot of them are going to say no. Good. What does the most I mean that the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee? You got to serve what I want. I want you to shine your shoes before you plow that field. That's service. I want to see that done. I want your woman to shine your shoes up and you to plow the field. Serve me and do that. She can plow in heels. Huh? Plow in heels. Yeah, That's what I want to see. Shine her shoes. Shine too. her <laughs> shoes. Make him shine her shoes. Becky. <laughs> Y'all, they say these people are crazy. Yeah. That's, listen, that's what, that's what you call therapy. I'm going to need that to straighten my mind out from all the cra- craziness that I dealt with. I'm going to have to do these things. That's going to help me get my mind right. They say that's crazy. Huh? He's going to have Jake lay on <laughs> right. the floor. And put and his feet put on him. Y'all don't know what. Clean yeah, out exactly. The, they the, think I'm going crazy. But th- just like what you just said, don't you know they used to make the black little kid get down in front of him Talking about somebody who's gonna drain the rheumatism out of my feet, make him bald out and curl the white, curl the Negro up around his nasty feet. That happened in history. Yeah. So that's not. I, I'm saying say this, you know, just in a funny way, but I need those kinds of things done to reverse the curse, to reverse that mess that I've learned and gathered all these years in captivity. Mm-hmm. Verse thirteen. Mandingo. Yeah, Mandingo, right? Yeah. Isaiah sixty and verse thirteen. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together. That's the wood. Go ahead. To beautify the place of my sanctuary. Our kingdom. Go ahead. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. For us to trodden on, not the Gentiles. Go ahead. The son also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Oh, man. They don't understand that. Deacon, you got to explain. You just can't just... No, nah, I'm going to go over it. You got to... Go, I don't, don't want to mess it up. You no. go ahead and do it. So read again. <laughs> the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. So first off, look, look at me in the eyes. It's number one. Bending unto us. They bend down as far as possible. On their... What do you call it? Their knees and bow down like this. Go ahead. And all they that despise thee. And all the nations who... Because all nations hate us. All those who despised us, go ahead, shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. To bow. That's humiliation. That is pure cut humiliation. A white man, a heathen, has to bow down to a Negro's feet. That's, that would never happen in their minds. I need, never. I, need, ahead, I need more of that bowing. Go back to that bowing. I need more than that. <laughs> Read that bow thing again. And they that despised thee. They that hated us called us nigger. Called us spick, wet back, ape, coon, savage, all of them that did that. Listen to what the listen to the therapy that the Lord gonna give us. Shall, they shall do what? Shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. You know what kind of fear and dread? Because it goes back to what you was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. The fear and dread that they're gonna have, they're gonna be afraid to even look up. That's the I, I wanna be just, I wanna be. When you come before me, don't you dare. You look up, and I'm going to cut your head off instantly. Your eyes better stay down. Never look up. That's how that's going to go down. Mm-hmm. And the beautiful thing about it, you want to cut off about four or five of their heads previous before you send this one in so you can get the message in, front of that one. in the front of that one. Look up only to see this. Y'all think I'm crazy. Don't you know they did these kinds of things to us? They used to rip us apart, tie horses on a brother, light him on fire, and tie horses and beat the horses, oh, tie and feather him, and send one, send the horses in opposite directions, ripping the brother apart in the presence of our pregnant women that was made to watch. Y'all hear me? So I'm not talking crazy. This is what you call reap what you sow in revenge. And the Lord says, seeing that it is a righteous thing to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So I'm talking Christ. I'm talking the Bible. That's the real Christian Christian doctrine. Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Babe. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Yes, they're gonna call us when they bow to our feet. Go ahead. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. Right. That's the curses. Go ahead. So that no man went through thee. No man want to be near you. Go ahead. Despise you. Go ahead. I will make thee an eternal excellency. A joy of many generations. The most loved nation on the planet. Go ahead. 
Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of kings. Meaning rob them clean, take their wealth, their substance. Go back to Job about them about taking up their substance. Restitution. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am the Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Go ahead. For brass I will bring gold. So we have brass now. Brass, jewelry, whatever. He says, nah, you have brass, brass you got in your wrist? Nah, take that off. You want gold. Mm. Go ahead. And for iron, I will bring silver. It's an iron ring? No, 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 no. You want silver. Take it, put that off. Put some silver on. Go ahead. And for wood? Brass. That's made of wood? Now you want brass instead. Go ahead. And for stones, iron. Nah, that's not, that's not, that's not good. Stones? You, know, you want iron in your house. Go ahead. I will also make thy officers peace. Our officers will be peaceful. Not our heathen officers. Our own officers. Go ahead. And thy exactors, righteousness. And our tax collectors. Tax collector, go back to Ezra 4 and 20, and it goes back to Chronicles 28 and 5. We're going to have tax collectors, and they better, they're going to collect, and you better have for us to collect. We're going to put you to sleep forever. Right. So, so when the Most High said that he would beautify the meek with salvation, that's what we, we read in there. He's going to make us beautiful. Yep. That's why he said our men are going to be as, as gods, yep. and our women are going to be like Palace. palaces. That's called beautifying the meek. You're going to beautify this nation of Israel. Yep. This crap that we're in now, we're going to, this is going to be like you was talking earlier. I don't know if you read it. It's going to be like a bad dream to us. Yeah. We ain't gonna, this, is, th this is going to be gone. Y'all yep. don't know the greatness that the Lord has, has lined up for us. We can't even read about it. He said it has entered, hasn't entered into our mind, our hearts, or nothing. Mm -hmm. And we only read in what it says in the Bible, and we're happy. The most I say, I got more than you can ever even imagine. How great you're going to be when I get you out of this thing. Now, we talk about salvation. Read verse 18. Watch this. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. The violence take about force. No more violence in our land. Go ahead. I say no things referring to the so-called Jews. There's violence all in that land. Mm -hmm. It ain't talking about them. Read again. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Go ahead. Wasting nor destruction. You got Arabs trying to shoot missiles over their walls. Right, right now in Israel. That's not talking about, that's not here. This hasn't been fulfilled yet. Read again. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. Watch this. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. So within the walls of Israel, where our people are dwelling there, that is salvation. So you hear people say, I'm saved. Well, where the hell are you? Are you here? Salvation is in God's borders, behind his walls. You're not behind his walls. This is an belly of the beast. Get second Ezra 9 and 8. Behind his wall, in his, within his, his borders, his realm, the kingdom, is salvation. Not in the sons of America. Second Ezra 9 verse 8. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 8. Shall be preserved... From the said perils. Um, reverse, let me see it. Let me get to it first. That's just nine. Let me look at it. Uh, verse, verse seven. seven. Yeah. yeah. Verse seven. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works. Mean overcome by his works unto the end. Revelations. His works. Go ahead. And by faith. And by faith coupled with that. Go ahead. Whereby ye have believed. Go ahead. Shall be preserved from the said perils. From destruction. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation. Shall see one. Shall what? Shall see my salvation. Where? In my land. That's where salvation is. You cannot be saved and you're still here. It's the salvation in my land. In my land. Behind his walls in Isaiah. He's repeating what Isaiah was saying. That's what always repeats what Isaiah says. You go through the book. Go ahead. And within my borders. And within his borders. That's what Isaiah said. Go ahead. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Because salvation was promised to us from the beginning of time. Never the other nations. Go to um, Joel 2.27. Why? Why was it a promise to them? Let's see why. Some heathens are online, they, their heart hurts. Joel 2 and 27. Hope it stops. Joel 2 and 27. 
And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. He dwells in Israel. Go ahead. And that I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Go ahead. And none else. And, wow, that's too clear to understand. I am the Lord your God and nobody else's. No, none else. Go ahead. And my people shall never be ashamed. They're the only ones on the earth that actually have a God. That's why they won't be ashamed. Verse 32. Verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Go ahead. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem for shall... In Mount Zion, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, in his borders, in his land, go ahead. Shall be deliverance. For, go ahead. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant... Whom the Lord shall call. And the remnant whom the Lord shall choose. The remnant of Israel shall receive that salvation within the land. The remnant of all 12. Because all of us ain't making it. They've been there. Two thirds got to go. Because two thirds are Negroes and Hispanics. You don't want them in the kingdom. They'll destroy it within days. Jeremiah 50. In verse 20. It's one of my favorite chapters here. This is, this is the time we're going to have some fun. We the heathens had fun with us. We're going to have fun with them too. Jeremiah 50 and verse uh, 20. In those days and in that time. In say, those days and in that time. Watch this. Say of the Lord. The iniquity of Israel shall be sought for. And there shall be none. We'll be all righteous. Go ahead. And the sins of Judah. And they shall not be found. Go ahead. For I will pardon them. Whom I reserve. Whom he delivers. Who, who, who are saved, chosen, predestined. Go ahead. Go up against the land of Marathim. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go to 51. I'm sorry. 51 20. That's good too. We'll go 51 20. 51 and 20. That Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20. Here we go. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. Most I says that the nation of Israel, us, are his battle axe. We are his battle axe. It's a double-edged axe. Swing it one way it cuts, other way it cuts. Go ahead. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. Remember that's in Psalms 2, Revelation 2, 27. For with you will I break the nations. Go ahead. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the horses, the horse and his rider. So we're going to... Kill not only them, but their horses too. Or in this instance, their tanks, their uh, motorcycles, whatever they use. Automobiles. Automobiles are going to destroy that too. Go ahead. And his rider. And with thee Ooh, will their I... drivers. Go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. Watch this. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. See, we're fair. No discrimination there. Breaking pieces, man and woman. See? Both of y'all get an equal shot. Go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. See, we're fair. Old and young get killed. Go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. Young man and woman. Go ahead. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. See, the animal's going to get it too. The animal's got to get it also. Oh, and, well. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. So we're going to do damage to these nations. They're not going to sit there and submit themselves to our people. That's God honoring Israel, like when you read in Psalms 149. It says, this honor have all his saints. Then yep. when you read Psalms 149, 49th chapter, he says that we shall put our enemies in chains and put them in fetters of iron. Yeah, I had that too. Okay. That's what that's talking about. So what he say? He said, well, with you will I do all of these things. And he's going to honor us. He's going to allow us to put their captains to death. He's going to allow us to put their soldiers to death. He's going to allow us to put all their, mil all their powerful men and all that, put them in. He's going to allow us to do that. Yep. He said, I'm going to give you the glory. Let you do it. That's Michael, beautiful. Michael 5 and verse 7. Yep. We're going to go with that same thing, same vein. Micah 5 and 7. To 9. Micah chapter 5 and 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as a dew from the Lord. We're going to be everywhere. Go ahead. As the showers upon the grass 
that tarrieth not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. Uh -huh. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest. Watch this. As a young lion among the flocks of sheep. Remember, we're that old lion right now. But as we, we can repent, repent as a nation, eventually in the kingdom, we're going to be that young lion we once were before under Joshua and David. That young, fierce, healthy lion that did damage. We're going to be that once again. Go ahead. Who? Yep, you're going to set us loose, right? Go ahead. Who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces, and none can deliver. And none can stop us. Go ahead. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. I'm going to kill them. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 15. Verse 15. And I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. They're going to get put the death in a way they never imagined. They're going to see us doing damage. What's happening? Where does these niggas come from? He's been, he, I'm shooting them and they ain't working. They ain't going to say niggas in that day. No, you're not. <laughs> they ain't even going to go. We're going to be able to read their thoughts if they even think about it. I'm going to make their head explode while it's on the top of the... <laughs> Deuteronomy 33 and 27. We're almost done. <laughs> I think I'm crazy. The scripture said we shall, we shall, well, exactly. The most high said that we shall meditate on terror. Yep. That's what it means. We're going to think of ways. That's what it's talking about. That's the Bible. That's yep. vengeance. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. The eternal God is thy refuge. Uh huh. And underneath are the everlasting arms. Protection, go ahead. And he shall tr thrust out the enemy. He's going to push the enemy out in front of us. Watch this. From before thee. From be in front of us, go ahead. And shall say. Shall say what? Destroy them. Destroy them all. Kill them all. That's what the Lord's going to do. Not save them all, not hug them all, hold their hand, tiptoe through the tulips with them. That's not what he says. He says push him out front, kill him. Kill her, kill that. That's his baby, kill that too. That's what God is going to tell us to do. And they can't stop it either. Psalms 149. No, I can't bypass that one. Psalms 149. A little bit more time. 149 and I'm not going to be too much of it. Let me get to the point. Uh, damn, the whole thing is good. Yeah. I'll just read the whole thing, man. It was, it's, it's, <laughs> dang, I, can't, I can't even skip it. You can't skip just, it. just read it, man. <laughs> Psalms chapter 149, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. That's what Nat Turner said. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Yeah, yep. Go ahead. And his praise in the congregation of saints. And his praise in the congregation of saints, which is Israelites. Go ahead. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. And we will. Go ahead. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. That's Christ. Go ahead. Psalms 2. Let them praise his name in the dance. We're going to dance and praise his name while dancing. Go ahead. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. We're going to make songs to him. Go ahead. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. Uh huh. He will beautify the meek with, with salvation. salvation. Yeah, as you said earlier. Go ahead. Let the saints be joyful in glory. As we said, we receive joint heirs, dominion, glory, and all nations shall serve him. We're going to receive that inheritance. That's coming out of Romans 9. Yeah. The glory. It said yep. the it pertains to whom to them. pertains to glory to Israel. Mm -hmm. So let Israel rejoice in glory. Yep. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. You don't wake up at your bed singing. No work. No nine to five. No, no freaking uh, overtime. No retirement. No pension. None of that. So you would sing in your bed. Wake up. Wake up. Hitting sound like Luther. Yeah. As soon as you got the bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live band singing. Huh? Have a band there. Have, Have Esau band, band playing in front of your bed. And if they don't sing right, we're gonna feed them to the lions. 
I want a door. You I better want a sing doorbell. better than Elvis that day. I want a doorbell. <laughs> I want a he's gonna stand outside and put and press his, press his forehead. Ding dong. He gotta say ding dong. I gotta hear it. I gotta hear ding dong. Otherwise, you get put to death. So <laughs> don't call him a doorbell family. That's their last name. Doorbell. He mm. saw doorbell. You know what it's like? We, we go right, right. <laughs> have a group Son, of them. wife, all them doorbells. <laughs> the line. Generation, generation of doorbells. <laughs> the great, great grandfather was a doorbell. <laughs> the honor <and> doorbell. <laughs> We're going to say sing aloud upon our beds. We're going to wake up, give orders, and go back to sleep. Yep. That's going to be beautiful. Ding dong. <laughs> Louder. Read again. Verse uh, five. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Verse six. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. That's the Bible. Go ahead. And a two-edged sword in their hand. That isn't. That's a two-edged sword. Literally a two-edged sword. Swing in one direction, it cuts. Never direction, it cuts. That's what the most I call this is battle axe. Swing in both directions, it's cutting something. Both directions. Go ahead. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Uh-huh. And punishments upon the people. Uh-huh. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. That's Isaiah 60, verse 10 and down. We read that earlier. To beautify the place. To put a noble in chains. Yeah. To execute upon them the judgment written. That goes back to Deuteronomy right there earlier. Thrust them out and say destroy them. It's the same thing. Go ahead. This honor have all his saints. No, all people. All his saints. This honor have all his saints. We have the honor of doing that. No other nation has that. Because they're going to be the victims. The judgment written. The judgment written in the Bible. That's what we, God is commanding us to execute this upon our enemies. He said, you must execute what's written here upon the nations. That's what he's saying. And I'm going to honor you while you're doing. Yep. Obadiah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And David said, praise God. Yes. <laughs> Obadiah 15. Fly through this. Obadiah 15. We're going to read to 18. We're going to jump to 21. Obadiah 15. Yeah. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. No, some. All the heathen. All of them. Go ahead. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. What's done to us is going to do to you. Go ahead. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Uh huh. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Uh huh. Yea, they drink that judgment. Go ahead. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall, and they shall swallow down. They're gonna drink every ounce of judgment promised them. Go ahead. And they shall be as though earlier. And they shall be as though they had not been. They shall be as though they never ruled at all. As a dream. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Temporary setback. Go ahead. But, a, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Here we go again. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Go ahead. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Lands and people. 18. And the house of J Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord hath spoken. So there will come a time where we're going to have to take Esau off the earth entirely. Because he's not right. We're going to have him in subjection in Amos 9. Isaiah 60. But there's going to come a time. We'll go to another, that's another class. Where they're going to go into rebellion. We're going to have to eradicate them because they're not Right. His spirit is not upright in him. That's what the Bible says. You cannot make that crooked, which the Lord has made, well, made straight, but the Lord has made crooked. He got to go. He is the border of wickedness. He's the beginning of it, and he's the end of it. He got to go. Once he's gone, peace on earth. Let me read one scripture. for That was it? No, I'm verse 15. Okay, continue. No, let me verse uh, 21. 15. Verse 21. Verse 21. No, and I'm sorry. There's 21? 21, yes. I'm sorry. And saviors... Shall yeah. come up on Mount Zion. Saviors, that's us. Go ahead. To judge the Mount of Esau. Go ahead. And, and once we judge him, we will destroy him. 
watch this. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Once he's judged and no longer remaining, then the kingdom will be the Lord's. That's when the kingdom is established. When he's eradicated off the planet. Yeah, y'all, son. Jeremiah, to back up everything that we just read. This is beautiful, especially when you just read out of verse 15. Right. Where it says about how they have drunk upon the holy mountain of God. They made us drink castration. They made us drink rape. They made us drink lynchings, burnings, robbery, slavery. They made us drink these. They made us drink that nasty cup of captivity. You're not going to rape them. Real nations gonna no, rape yeah, them. yeah, no, yeah. No, we're we not doing touching, that. No. We're not doing that. No, them. no, because that's against the laws of the we're most. Good. High. We're good with right. that. We got- so y'all all right? Let's read. Uh, Jeremiah chapter uh, 49 and verse 7, then jump to verse 12. Because it's talking about, we just read Obadiah. Obadiah was talking about Esau, and is here is talking about it again. You got it? Jeremiah 49 and verse 7. Concerning Edom. Concerning who? Edom. So we're talking about the same demon. Jump to the verse that I want. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. This is verse 12. Go ahead. Verse 12. Behold, they, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken. This is talking about Israel. Israel was not supposed to, by nature, drink this cup of all of the atrocities that happened because we are God's people. Mm-hmm. Read it again. For, they, for thus saith the Lord, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunk it. But because we broke God's laws, we had to drink it all. And it was done to us through the nations. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. And art thou? He- now God turns the cameras to him now. He says, are not who? Thou he. And art thou he? Meaning that, Esau now. That shall all together go unpunished. And you think you're going to go into the kingdom? Mm-hmm. Get saved. Going back and get saved after all this evil that you've done to Israel? If I tore Israel up for breaking God's laws, what do you think I'm going to do to you? Mm-hmm. Read it again. And art thou what? Art thou he that shall all together go unpunished? These people are so sick, they actually think they're going to escape the judgment that God got in store for them. And even though, And we're his children, and we didn't escape. What do you think is going to happen to them? They're surely going to drink this cup. Go ahead. Thou shall not go unpunished. So Christianity is a lie. They shall not go unpunished. Go ahead. But thou shall surely drink of it they're going to drink it all they're going to drink caps they're going to drink uh captivity they're going to drink murder they're going to drink castration they're going to drink it all lynchings they're going to drink it all go ahead for i have sworn by myself that's the part of the verse i want right there god says that he has swore by himself he didn't ask anybody for permission to do this. He said, I'm putting my own reputation on the line. I'm putting my whole, I'm putting my whole Bible, my whole word on the deck. You know God can't break his own word. That's what he said. I put my own reputation up to make sure this gets done. Read that statement again. For I have sworn by myself. Say of the Lord. So I didn't ask anybody's permission. Go ahead. That Basra. Basra was the kingdom of Edom, was the capital of Edom. Who's the capital? Where is the capital city of Esau today? You're standing in it. America. Read it again. That Basra shall become a desolation. That's what you just read in there. Yep. That Basra shall become a desolation. The Lord is going to destroy every square inch of this place. Yep. Go ahead. A reproach. And it's going to also be a reproach. And a what? A waste. And a waste. And a curse. And a curse. And all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. Shall be perpetual waste. It's going to be like there was never nothing. Just like what you was reading earlier. They're going to be like they never. The way we are, nobody really knows that we are the greatest people that ever walked. They're going to be like that. We are God's jewels, and they're calling us all these niggas and all this kind of garbage. They don't realize that we are the jewels of God. But nobody knows that. They act like they don't know that. So that's how they're going to be. They're going to be become nothing. They're going to be worth less than a piss pot. Yeah, Deuteronomy 33 and verse 28. 
just read 27 earlier about thrust them through and destroy them. Verse 28, after that. Verse 28. Of Before Deut and after. Verse 28. Deuteronomy 33, verse 28. Israel then shall... Stop. Israel then, after verse 27, go ahead. Shall dwell in safety alone. What? Shall dwell in safety alone. No, with all nations there. Alone. Alone. You will dwell in safety alone. We don't want you nations there. We're good. Stay where you at. Go ahead. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Promised land. All his heavens shall drop. Also his heavens. So, excuse me. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Blessings. Our land is going to be blessed. Get um, 1 Kings 8. I'm almost done. I'll get through this real fast. 1 Kings 8. They're going to try to use this against us. The Stockholm Syndrome Negroes are going to use these scriptures to try to confound you. 1 Kings 8.41. Some of y'all have asked this question to me now, before. I'm going to answer it now. 1 Kings 8, 41. You're going to hear this one. We're going to read the verse 43. Let me give you the answer. And two precepts, and I'm going to wrap it up. Moreover, concerning a stranger Con that, is, got, go ahead. that is not of thy people, Israel. That's not Israel. Go ahead. But cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. Go ahead. For they shall hear of thy great name. And of thy strong they hand. They shall hear of our great name and of our strong hand. Go ahead. And of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Go ahead. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for. That all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee. And do as, thy people. As do thy people. As do thy people Israel. And that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. So this is Solomon speaking about the time when he was ruling and the heathen come by. And they can, because at the time he was in our glory. That was when he was ruling. Then in the kingdom it will happen again. It's not talking about now. And they're not coming to say, oh, um, how to hear our great name and strong hand. You know strong hands us right now. Nope. We are broken and scattered and destroyed. They ain't saying that right now. That's when we're established. When we're ruling, get Zechariah um, 8 and 23 to go along with that. During Solomon's time we did that, when we were ruling and in our power and all 12 were united under one king. That ain't now. Zechariah 8 and 23. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. Right, Even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew. Grab our fringe, go ahead. Saying... We will go out with you, for we have heard that God is with you. We will go with you what? We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with oh, you. Are they saying that now? No, that's when we're ruling. That goes back to Isaiah 14. They will cleave unto you. That's what that's going into when we're ruling. They did it when Psalmist time when he was ruling, because Psalmist was a great king, wise above, above all kings. They came to see his wisdom. The Egyptians came to him. The Ethiopian Sheba came to him. We was in our glory at the time. That's not talking about now. Get Isaiah 61, verse 5. Almost done. Isaiah 61, verse 5. That God is with you. So we're going with that part. Isaiah 61, verse 5 and 6. When we're ruling. Isaiah 61 and verse 5. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Go ahead. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Said earlier, shall be our vine men and our dressers. They're going to be our farmers. We ain't doing nothing. That's our rest. We've worked hard enough. No more working. That's it. You weren't supposed to work in the first place. Go ahead. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. Uh -huh. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. You shall do what? Eat the riches of the Gentiles. Or the forces of the Gentiles. Go ahead. And in their glory. And in their wealth, their substance. Go ahead. Shall ye boast yourselves. I'm wearing leather, man. Thanks to they like the leather, man. Thanks. Thanks, Egypt. I like that silk. I want that silk. They didn't hear that word boasting. Boast themselves. We're going to boast out. You know how we boast in ourselves and Versace and all that stuff? That's Jake. That's Jake. We're going to be bragging. Bragging about all the wealth we got, the gold we got on, that we got from conquering the other nations. 
I got this on. I cut this Arab's head off yesterday. He had, he had this chain on. Ah, I look nice. Right? I look Can you imagine good. that? Like That's that. going to be beautiful. I cleaned it off yesterday. Walk, walk out. Whose head did you bring? <laughs> I got skulls in my bag. Ah, it's a silk bag. Ah, the match my garment. Ah, match my garment. We're going to be crazy, man. I don't, I'm be crazy, Lord, as well. I'm be doing crazy stuff. I thought they do crazy. I thought crazy. Verse 7. For your shame, ye shall have double. For our shame, we shall have double reward. Go ahead. And for confusion. And for confusion of who we are, our condition, our confusion. Go ahead. They shall, they shall rejoice in their portion. We will rejoice in our portion. Go ahead. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. In our land, we shall possess double. Go ahead. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. We will them. never be unhappy. Imagine being happy every day. I got that though in the past though. That's it. The whole week, ah, I'm smiling. Then it's time to go back home. That's, imagine that feeling of Passover every day of your life. Every day. That's healthy. That's healthy. Alone. Just the thought of it alone is healthy. Where we at? Read on to verse 9. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I, the Lord, love judgment. Go ahead. I hate robbery. He loves justice. Go ahead. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Verse 9. Watch this. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. Our seed will be known among the heathen. I mean, all our children who are scattered abroad in these heathen lands, they're going to say, that ain't our people. Bring them to his own people. That go to Isaiah 49, 22. They're going to bring our children who are scattered among the nations, who they know are Israelites, back to us. That's what it's going into. And they're going to know our children and children are going to be blessed. Our own children and our children scattered abroad, they're going to know that's the child of God. Bring him back to his people. That's so-and-so's child. Don't touch that child. Leave him alone. Give him some gold. His father will kill you. I've seen it. <laughs> go ahead. And their offspring among the people. Go ahead. And their offspring among the people. Go ahead. All that see them shall uh, acknowledge them. All that see us, that's, that's what we want. We wear, you dress fancy, you wear fancy clothes. We want to be acknowledged. But well, we're going to be acknowledged in righteousness here. Read again. All that see them shall acknowledge them. Go ahead. That they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. And that's they're going to grab our garments and go, well, I'll cleave unto you. We know God's with you. That's what it's going into when we're ruling once again. Micah 4 and 8, and that's it. Micah 4, verse 8. This goes in conjunction with 2 Ezra 6 and 9, where it says, Esau is the end, and Jacob is the beginning that followeth. There's a precept for that. Micah 4, verse 8. Micah 4, verse 8. Hold on, let me get it. I never find that book. It's so small. After uh, Jonah and Obadiah. Thank you, thank you. Go ahead. Micah 4, verse 8. Got it, go ahead. And thou, O tower, of the flock. Israel, go ahead. The stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Go ahead. Unto thee shall it come. Unto thee shall it come. What, what's the it? Unto thee shall it come. What's the it? No, read them. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. The question. Oh, I'm sorry. Read again. Uh, okay. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Unto thee shall it come. What is the it? Go ahead. Even the first dominion. Even the first dominion. The, Go ahead. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. The kingdom shall come to the daughter. The first dominion. Esau is, a, is the end. Jacob is the beginning that followeth. The first that followeth. The first kingdom. First dominion. The dominion above all others. That's what it's talking about. The first dominion. All right? That's what's promised to us in the end. So I'm ending on that. Oh, yeah, some more? Just, just real quick. Go just ahead. real quick. Uh, Revelation 18, 4 to 6. Because when we talked about that cup that the nations have drunk upon us, and I'm glad you said that because somebody may have taken what, 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 what I said and said, oh, we're going to be raping them too. No, that ain't happening at all. So I'm going to read this to clear this, clear it up. Because we're not going to, God's laws are not going to be violated. But let me show you how the most High going to deal in terms of how they dealt with us. Read. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye may not be partakers of her sins, 
and that you receive not of her place. So the Most High wants us to get our brain out of Babylon, get our mind out of this, out, out of Babylon, and trying to bring the nations in as as fellow heirs with us in, in obtaining the kingdom. They're not to be that. The Most High said, "Come away from that. Come away from that thinking." Read. For her sins have reached unto heaven. For her sins have reached unto heaven. This is the message about, this is after Babylon is destroyed, by the way. He's just writing it down because verse 2 of this chapter is actually going back to Isaiah chapter 4, what is it? Isaiah 14, 21, when it says that they, that they ain't going to be no more. When you read the second verse, that's the past tense. I think it's Isaiah 34 that that's talking about. Uh, about there shall be no, uh, nothing left of them. Right. Read. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquity. And God has remembered what these people did to us. Did to us. God has it recorded on about what they did. But listen. Read. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Reward her even as she rewarded us. Now, some of the things that they've done to us is against God's law. So the Most High ain't going to have us to do those kinds of things. You follow me? Y'all all right? So how is this going to go down? Read. And double unto her, doubling according to her works. So the Mosai said the things that are.